I think what Destiny is doing to me is horrible. And for you to say, even for anybody to be like, I don't know whose side I'm on at this point, I think is is brainwashed. It has finally arrived. It's finally arrived. We've been waiting for months for this now. The much discussed, much criticized, much who knows what article uh, of Mr. Girl writing about the alleged abuse of Destiny. It's finally here. Without any further ado, let's get into it and see what happens. Okay, here we go. So, I'm excited. Who's excited? I'm excited. Let's see what he says. Let's go. Right. Here we go. The Destiny Report. Retaliation, negligence, and sexual misconduct. How Stephen Benell II abuses his platform. Introduction. Stephen Kenneth Bunnell II, a.k.a. Destiny, is a 34-year-old political streamer and was an early pioneer of professional live streaming as it exists today. He aims to stream 10 hours per day, 7 days a week. Thousands of viewers congregate for the duration of every stream. His YouTube channel currently sits at 641,000 subscribers and averages over 10 million views per month. He is not public about his income, but I'll disclose that I earned around 3,500 a month on YouTube with close to 40,000 subscribers and a fraction of Destiny's audience engagement level. As with other streamers, Destiny's additional revenue streams include merchandise, sponsorship deals, and donations, usually in the form of chat donations on his personal website or super chats on YouTube. Audience members can pay to have Destiny react to their chat messages in real time. The more they pay, the more likely he is to react. I think I'm just going to read it mainly. I'm not going to really react much, I don't think. I think I'm just going to read it and take it in and then give some takes after. I don't know. That probably is the best way to do it. It's such a long article, I don't really know what to do, but we'll figure it out. Jesus Christ, man. Because of the semi-accessibility, I'm going to mute notifications, by the way. So if you're sending stuff through, I appreciate it. But Okay. <clears throat> Because of the semi-accessibility of creators and the sheer volume of content, live streaming is an addictive medium. Put plainly, Destiny's most dedicated fans watch him for several hours a day and give him hundreds of dollars per month each. According to a 2019 demographic survey of 1,400 Destiny fans conducted by a community member, 6% are 14 to 17 year olds and 75% are 25 or under. 93% are male and 73% 70 are white. So this is just links and stuff. Demographic. Okay. Destiny's audience trusts him to slice through a rational political discourse with ice cold utilitarian logic. They identify with him very strong. They identify with him strongly, adopting his positions and even his speech patterns. And they have a reputation for harassing Destiny's ever-growing list of ex-enemies and friends. Th this report aims to paint a broad picture of Stephen's public and private abuses of the substantial power afforded to him by YouTube, his colleagues, and his audience. I will present examples of the following dynamics, which are disturbing individually and worse when combined. Number one, unequal sexual relationships. In the last decade, I mean, <laughs> look, there's stuff I'm just going to not be able to stop from reacting from, right? Does, does that not feel like a walk back from what the position was originally? I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Like, <laughs> he was being, he was getting, he was calling him Harvey Weinstein. And now it's always got some unequal sexual relationships. Like, come on. Anyway, I'll try to interact and react as little as possible because I do just want to read it, okay? <clears throat> Jesus Christ. In the last decade, Stephen has formed dozens of sexual relationships with small streamers who benefit enormously from their associations with him, especially when they appear on his stream. Frequently, these are women who suffer from mental health issues and have expressed suicidal ideations or even been hospitalized for suicide attempts. 
In 2020, Destiny explained why using your platform for sex with smaller creators is unethical, saying, let's say I have a podcast. I got 30,000 viewers. Let's say that there's a girl that messages me. We talked a little bit. She really wants to be on. And I'm like, yeah, cool. Like, you really want to come on my podcast, blah, blah, blah. I could probably start sexting her and she'll probably give in and send me nudes and shit because she doesn't want to lose that opportunity. She might not actually want be into it at all really but if i start propositioning her if she says no to me she might if i say no to this guy i'm not going to make it on that yeah i think it's wrong yeah i don't think you should nobody can ever know if you're actually that kind of person that's why it's a very hazy area where you can't really consent if that situation in that situation because you don't really know if that this guy's going to fuck you over if you say yes or no to them if they have a big position of power over you. Number two, retaliation. Stephen mobilizes his in highly involved community called DGG to harass those who criticize him, including small streamers he has had or even still has sexual relationships with. He has leaked nudes, threatened to leak nudes, secretly recorded and leaked private conversations and directed his audience to participate in the doxing of a small streamer he was in a sexual relationship with. Okay, I'm not familiar with what this is This is in reference to. Does anyone... Does anyone know anything about that? The leaked nudes thing? I don't know. I'm sure we're going to see, obviously, evidence of that in the, the article, right? <coughs> Anyway, let's continue on. Destiny has acknowledged this bullying behavior. In a 2020 stream, trans... Oh my God. This is exactly, exactly what I was worried about. This is exactly the kind of thing that I was worried about was going to happen. And it's why I had said to him a number of times... Before you, you know, I'm happy to run stuff by me and we can talk about it, right? Why the fuck would you include Demon Mama? That is fucking insane, man. Anyway, let's give it a chance, okay? I'm trying to not react, web, but it's difficult. Let's just read it. Trans creator Demon Mama told Destiny, My Twitter was a nice, peaceful haven, and then one interaction with you and I've got people dropping T-slurs on me, F-slurs. Someone telling me I should be hung for being an F-slur. There's just this pattern that keeps happening with your behavior. Destiny responded, Cause a lot of harm, I hope, against certain people that maybe they're bullied off Twitter because there are a lot of toxic fucks on this platform that make it a horrible fucking place to be around. <laughs> I mean, just the thing is, obviously, knowing some of the dynamics at play there and knowing what Demon Mama's community is like, um, you know, herself, knowing that on Twitter, it's very difficult to actually figure out, you know, well, this Twitter account, you know, there's someone on Twitter, for example, called Voshfan, and they're always posting like racist, anti-Semitic shit. And it's like, they're clearly not a Voshfan. But if you looked at it at a glance, you might think this is a Voshfan. But there's actually no substantive evidence that the person is actually a Bosch fan. Anyway. Okay. I need to just get through this. So I'm going to try and stop interjecting. Let's just continue. On March 15th, 2023, in a Twitter argument with Ryan Beard, Destiny wrote, You're hopping into a bandwagon of people accusing me of being a rape apologist because you're still upset that I bullied you off the internet a year ago. Don't play stupid. You know exactly what you're doing. And what is this? So these are presumably just archives of tweets. Okay. <clears throat> Sad sadism. Stream guests, including Destiny sex partners, are routinely pitted against each other in emotional gladiator matches. <laughs> Oh my God. I'm just imagining, you know, in uh, Gladiator, you know, you've got the emperor 
and he sat there, Joaquin Phoenix, and he sat there and he does a thumbs up or the thumbs down. It's basically Destiny doing that, but it's two naked women that he's he's fucked both of them and they're fighting each other to the death. I don't know. That's just what came into my head. Over which Destiny presides as the ostensible voice of reason. Destiny frequently expresses joy when others are distressed, even if the distress is severe and accompanied by talk of suicide. And afterward, his audience takes to Reddit and Twitter to revel in what they infuse him. Okay, what they call... What's that word? I can't even say it. I'm a bit retard, clearly. What they call drama. Hassan Piker. Okay. So we've had we've had a Demon Mama reference, Mr. Beard reference, a Sam Piker reference. Okay, good. Hassan Piker, now a top Twitch streamer. Euphemistically. Euf oh, euphemistically. Yeah, euphemistically. Okay, I get it now. I don't know why I couldn't read it. That's weird. Hassan Piker, now a top Twitch streamer, made his start in Destiny's community before a public falling out. In 2022... He said to his viewers, I'm not going to rebuild the bridge, bro. No, there is no bridge to be fucking rebuilt. Too many years have been fucking farming content off my ass, you know, trying to get me to turn into a fucking lol cow. I would have probably killed myself if I wasn't able to fucking completely escape the grips of Destiny's community straight up 100%. Oh, Are we just to take it that when someone says I'm, you know, expresses a suicidal thought publicly? Are we to presume that they're telling the truth <coughs> and that they would have killed themselves? Like, are we to genuinely believe that Assam Piker was on the precipice of fucking roping? Come on, man. This is fucking mental. Anyway, I'll try not to interject, okay? By farming content, Piker means destiny was intentionally causing him distress as a way to entertain viewers. A lol cow is a disgraced internet figure whose misery attracts an audience of sadists. When asked for an interview for this report, Piker declined, saying, My abusive experience is extensively documented and endlessly retconned by DGG. He reached out to a son Piker. <laughs> no way. No way. That's wild. No way. Number four. Narrative control. Stephen's penchant for deception and his astounding dedication to silencing critics makes it difficult for newcomers to understand how a system of content creation operates. Criticism is frequently banned in his subreddit, Discord, and audience chat. Smaller streamers who leech off his audience, referred to as orbiters, I was one of them, act as PR tentacles and will go to great lengths to stay in Stephen's good graces. White blood cell. To shut down criticism outside of the community or misinformation, as he puts it, Destiny tells his audience, if you see something, say something. What is this? What is this? <laughs> the Destiny report. <laughs> I mean, true. <clears throat> is that is that true? Does Destiny do that? I don't. The problem is some of this stuff that's claimed. I don't, I'm not going to know either way. I feel like there is a dynamic that exists where streamers will do the kind of blank derangement syndrome thing. You know, they'll do the like the blank derangement syndrome thing, and this can be annoying. And when content creators perpetuate it, it's fucking retarded. Um, I've I've never seen Destiny myself do anything like that. But if there's examples, obviously I'll look at it. Recently, he said, "If you see something, say something." In regards to people spreading misinformation about him. <laughs> oh yeah i saw a clip of him and he was saying that if you see someone saying something about him <clears throat> you need to give ask him to give examples wasn't it just get through the stupid article when you say stuff like that it makes me not want to so stop saying stuff like that okay look i'm trying to find the right balance of reacting and talking about stuff and reading the article okay 
if you genuinely just want to read the article, just go and read the fucking article yourself, you lazy fucker. <clears throat> The above behaviours are not permitted in most professional environments, yet they are allowed on YouTube except perhaps calls for harassment. But Destiny lays down a foundation of plausible deniability whenever he can, and this allows him to fly under YouTube's radar. Okay, this is where I'm going to... Right. This is where I'm going to start to take big issues with some of this article, right? So YouTube have got policies around this sort of thing, okay? And there are people that get fucked over harassment in their videos and stuff like that, okay? Why is it that we've got to acquiesce to whatever Mr. Girl's standards are that are beyond what YouTube's are? This this part just doesn't make fucking sense to me, okay? What fucking business... Like, you can have a position and think it's wrong, and that's fine. But if I'm meeting YouTube standards, if Destiny's meeting YouTube standards... What is the problem? You're looking to implement another... You're basically looking to implement a layer of, like, HR. Do you see what I mean? Chuck, this isn't about you. No, that isn't about me, but he said this about me as well. So, yeah, of course, he's got the same position on me, fucking retard. So the point is, why should... <coughs> why should it be acquiesced to Max's position of what the... You know, if, you, if you're meeting YouTube TOS... Why the fuck do you have to meet someone else's standard of like, oh, be nicer on the internet, please? It's fucking insane to me. Anyway. Who am I? I'm a streamer, rapper. I bet he, uh, <laughs> I bet Max made sure he got the two Ps in there. He probably checked that about fucking 50 times, didn't he? Anyway, video essayist and occasional writer. I've made provocative content all my life, but most recently I'm known for the projects such as the Mr. Girl Real Doll Review, a disturbing and pornographic personal documentary about how a sex doll affected my relationship with my girlfriend, Shailen. The Gender Narrative, a non-partisan video essay about how we talk about gender, and my Cuties Review, infamous because I said the twerking 11-year-olds in the film were hot. The last project inspired thousands of white supremacists to send me death threats, but I can say without hesitation that the harassment I've received from Destiny community has been worse. I mean, didn't <laughs> didn't Big Tech's harassment get your entire fucking YouTube channel taken down? Anyway, <laughs> let's just continue on. <laughs> Since 2020, YouTube has banned and unbanned me once per year, though my current ban has lasted at, lo at longest at six months and may well be permanent. In 2007, I was arrested and barred from the University of Colorado campus for two months for telling my classmates we should empathize with a Virginia Tech shooter. The charges were dropped. I even got suspended in high school four times for my satirical newsletter. The sp suspensions were overturned retroactively. I have a way of getting in trouble without breaking the rules. Throughout my life, my family, friends, and fans have consistently said, by the way, this is like, you know, of course, initially, right? Initially, there was probably some sort of reporting that led to YouTube making maybe an automatic decision about something because they use machine learning to moderate stuff sometimes, right? But YouTube have reviewed this and they've looked at it and they've double checked. And YouTube, YouTube if, you, if, if your channel is still banned after six months, okay, and YouTube have had human beings looking at it, that means that YouTube have determined that you're breaking the rules. So this take of like, I have a way of getting in trouble without breaking the rules, right? Wait, hang on a minute. Is that true? Who was it? I need to ban that person from chat. Who was that fucking retard that said this isn't about me? I mentioned 116 times in this fucking article. Give me a fucking break. Jesus Christ. Unbelievable. <clears throat> anyway. Anyway. Anyway, this is this is fucking this is cope right here, okay? This is like cope. So, Max, whilst perhaps I might disagree with the rule that YouTube has, if you're still banned after six months, it's pretty obvious to me that YouTube have determined you've broken the rules in some way. So, you know, 
maybe you think that your standards are better, but if we're looking at the two people here, it seems like your standards are going to get you banned from YouTube and my standards at a YouTube platform are going to remain. So what are you left with? You're left with personal ideas or personal concepts of what should and shouldn't be allowed. And that's fine. If you think that, that's fine. But it's the way that not only is it the presentation of it in a, in a way that like applies social pressure to people to acquiesce to like what your way of doing it. It's also this like very harsh and heavy criticism of the people that aren't on board with it. Do you see what I mean? Anyway, come on, we need to get through this. Throughout my life, my family, friends and fans have consistently said, oh, Max. Three months into my relationship with Shailin, by which time I'd already freaked out everyone she knew, a childhood buddy of mine told her, it's a mistake to assume he enjoys it, he doesn't. In my YouTube videos and streams, I've tried to be as honest as possible, especially about myself, which caused an amusing culture clash when I entered Destiny's sphere just before Christmas in 2021. During the 11 months I spent working with Destiny and his orbiters, their posturing came to take on a darker meaning to me. I now see it as a cover for serious abuse. Destiny and his fans have criticised me for making myself out to be some grotesque hybrid victim and journalist over the four months I spent writing this report. I'm sure it was jarring to watch me go from professing my brotherly love for Destiny to calling in my emotional abuser, but that's how these things go. I'm horrified by the abusive system that I've profited from it from for a year, and if Destiny's fans are correct in saying I'm driven by hatred, then it is self-hatred. Jesus. Okay, so I said this um, earlier, I think. I'd heard on the grapevine that this was going to be a lot of transcripts, so, you know... I think later, maybe this isn't a summary more so, but I think later on it does get into more transcripts. But we'll see. Maybe there's more editorializing too. Anyway, I thought this was a transcript, but I was wrong. Here we go. For, oh, no, it says here. For readability, transcripts have been altered to remove some filler words such as unlike, you know, etc. Additionally, Discord DMs can be edited and deleted after they've been sent. So the logs presented here may not accurately show what was said at the time. Any corrections made will be noted at the top of the report. The DDoS Kid. A teenager disrupted Destiny's ability to stream, and Destiny later said he planned to kill the boy and his father, but decided not to because it wasn't worth the risk. Mia Rose. Destiny drunkenly groped a woman on stream. They had a sexual relationship at the time, but both have acknowledged the incident as an assault. Is this, is this just going to be a list of all the bad shit Destiny's done? Is that what this is going to be? Okay. I mean, hmm, yeah. Let's continue on. Let's give it a chance, okay? Blue tea. After Destiny leaked a woman's nudes to his friend, I, I don't even know who this is. After Destiny leaked a woman's nudes to his friends, she tweeted out photos of his genitals from his Twitter account. Destiny considered trying to get her dropped for a scholarship. Melina, Destiny's wife. They met when she was a 20-year-old fan and he was 30. They have char been char both characterised Destiny's treatment of her as psychologically abusive and Melina has said it makes her feel suicidal. Um, hang on a minute. Melina, I can't imagine Melina's... Wait. Melina wouldn't have spoken to Max as like a negative thing, would he? Okay, I guess we're going to get into it later. Bob Seven, <laughs> Melina's confidant and sexting partner for a year. When Bob told Melina and a mutual friend of Destiny's, he thought Destiny was manipulative. Destiny made false harassment allegations against him on behalf of a few women. When the women didn't support the smear campaign, Destiny smeared them as well. I mean, this I've got no idea about this Bob Seven stuff. I I never watched Destiny's video about it or any of the content. But, you know, I know that there's I know that there was like a lot of criticism of Destiny. Destiny did a video about it and then the tide turned and people were criticizing Bob Seven. Anyway. Yeah, I actually, funnily enough, randomly, I tried to watch the Bob Seven video the other day 
And I was like, God, this is a bit, I don't even understand what's going on here. So I didn't bother watching it. Maybe I should have, so I could catch up on what that's all about. Anna, Destiny had sex with a smaller streamer who became attached to him. When she criticized his lifestyle, he called her an insane stalker, which only provoked her to criticize him further. At the same time, Destiny convinced his fans and orbiters that Anna's abuse claim should be ignored for her own good. He was sexting her. At one point, Destiny threatened to leak Anna's nudes if she le leaked his sex. He also directed his fans to participate in harassing and doxing Anna in retaliation for her abuse claims. Sam. Destiny supported a mayoral candidate in Omaha who fired him when Destiny's reputation attracted negative press coverage. Sam was a local college-age resident who criticised him. After a battle of harsh and vulgar words, Destiny emailed Sam's employer to try and get him fired. What the fuck? I don't know about that one. That's, that's new for me. <laughs> that's a new one for me. Darius. Melina, a former sex partner of Darius, asked him to move to Austin with her after Destiny cheated on her. They had a falling out and Darius was suicidal. Destiny presided over a live stream fight between the two and viciously mocked Darius. Merrick, a former sex partner of Destiny's. He publicly mocked her suicide attempt three weeks after it happened. Denims and Little Fox, two young female streamers both in sexual relationships with Destiny. After Destiny and Melina withdrew an invitation to host the two in their apartment, Destiny smeared Denims as a liar on stream because he was afraid one of them might make false sexual misconduct allegations against him. White Nervosa. White Nervosa, no way! A small trans streamer who Destiny flirted with while boosting her career, likely not knowing she was trans. Around the time she started appearing on camera, Destiny lost interest and stopped growing her stream. Wait, is he suggesting that because White Nervosa was trans, Destiny didn't, wa didn't want to help? <laughs> <coughs> as soon as White Nervosa came on stream, Destiny was like, ugly, no thank you. Is that what he's suggesting? Fuck me. <laughs> Vosh, first a fan, then an orbiter, then a competitor. Destiny pounced on the opportunity to hum humiliate and sabotage Vosh when he was accused of sexual harassment. Okay, this one I do know about. This one I do know about, okay? Destiny took steps to try and protect Vosh from the allegations, right, in the early days, and even privated the video about it so as not to destroy his fledgling streaming career. And now it's getting framed as Destiny pounced on the opportunity to humiliate and sabotage Vosh. So I think one thing to bear in mind as we go through this, some of these dramas I'm fucking clueless about, okay? And I don't want to do the whole, oh, well, no, Chad, there's these links that prove this. I don't, I, I will be here forever. I will be here literally forever if I'm going over every intricate drama here, okay? I'm sure that if Destiny ends up going through this, he'll be able to respond more adequately to some of this stuff. But the stuff I do know about, obviously, yeah, I can comment on. And this framing of what happened with Vosh is absolutely fucking insane. And it, I mean, we'll go into it, I guess, but it in no way reflects the reality of what happened following that, you know? Um, so yeah, I think this is fucking insane framing of what happened with Vosh. Anyway, Destiny later cut ties with Vosh because his partner and friend campaigned for Destiny's deplatforming after he made a call for violence against BLM rioters. I, Max's definition of a call to violence is fucking wild to me. It's fucking wild to me. Anyway, nonetheless, let's continue on. <clears throat> Assorted stories. Lav, a 24-year-old, he became sexually involved with Destiny and as he encouraged her to start streaming and helped to grow her stream. Destiny set her up to be routinely humiliated and harassed by his community to the point of feeling suicidal. When she spoke out about it, he and his orbiters launched a misogynistic harassment campaign against her. <laughs> okay, well, obviously I can speak on that. <laughs> obviously, I was part of... I joined... I joined the war against Lav on the side of a misogynistic harassment. So obviously I can speak on that. 
Me and Destiny's platforming of Nick Fuentes. I became Destiny's friend in the, on Orbiter and slowly realized he was intentionally creating situations where I'd be hurt and humiliated. When Destiny became friendly with Nick Fuentes, I confronted him. Destiny banned me from his subreddit. Fuentes followers got me banned from YouTube and I cut ties with Destiny. Wait, it was big tech that got you banned, not Nick Fuentes. I mean, I guess technically, yeah, but then, hang on a second. You've said on stream that you're cool with big tech without being friends with big tech. And he's the person that's primarily responsible for it. Anyway. The DDoS kid. Right. Let's get into the, you know, examples. <coughs> Here we go. Here we go. The DDoS kid. In the spring of 2011... A teenage boy used a paid service to intermittently flood Stephen's IP address with drunk traffic known as a DDoS attack. He'd launched the attacks during Stephen's streams, breaking his internet connection and making it impossible for him to work. The, na the teen, named Jacob, eventually contacted Stephen over Skype so he could gloat. This gave Stephen and his fans enough information to track down Jacob's address and phone number. Stephen called Jacob's phone and demanded to speak to his parents. When Jacob refused and blocked his number... Stephen called again via Google Voice and, according to his own retelling, started sending him pictures over Skype of his sister. According to Stephen, Jacob's father sent Stephen an email denying the extent of Jacob's harassment and even suggested that Stephen defend Jacob rather than fight him. Instead, Stephen crafted a plan to kill Jacob and his father. He later explained on stream, Oh, I did troll the shit out of the DDoS kid. There's a guy... That's one of the people legitimately like, I was so, you have no, it's actually kind of scary how close I was to getting people together to go to his house and killing him and his family. Or it would have just been, it would have been just him and his father because I don't know anything about dude. That was some of the most fucked up shit in my entire life. I was so fucking close to doing it. But I was making so much money on Twitch and I don't know if my son was involved, but yeah, but for whatever reason, I decided my current life I had wasn't worth the risk of, oh my God, oh my God, I was so close. I had his fucking address. I had streets mapped out and I had Ev, you have no fucking idea. That's when I first started to get an interest in owning a weapon. I got a permit to own a gun and everything. Ultimately, Stephen found a way to defend against the DDoS attacks and went on to write a widely referenced protection guide. <laughs> Everyone's fucking giga chatting. I mean, look, I've already spoken on this, okay? It's pretty fucking clear that was like a schizoid moment. It's pretty clear that was a schizoid moment on Destiny's part. I think there is definitely an argument as to why, you know, someone might feel justified to do that. But I'm fairly certain that... um destiny now looks back on it and although he says and can argue as to a reason why it might be justifiable i don't think he thinks it was like a good thing that he was going to go and kill someone i could be wrong on that but anyway nonetheless nonetheless let's read on <clears throat> well the, the thing is yeah sure max is obviously big on the thoughts aren't crimes thing i think the problem is and the re well Max's position on it is that it, this isn't just thinking about it. If you're planning to do it, that's a step further. So, you know, the question would come down to how serious was Destiny in doing this? And how much of this is Destiny just fucking, you know, giving it giving it large on stream? Like, how much is it of overstating things? What does mapping out streets even mean? Do you know what I mean? How the fuck, how the fuck do you map out someone's street to the point, like, how does that plan into, like, killing them? You know, anyway, I've covered this already. I've got a video about it where I spoke about my thoughts on it. I don't want to like replicate this article so fucking long. We're just going to have to keep going. Okay, I need to I need to get my white blood cell on. In August 2017, responding to a video criticizing his early remarks about the incident, Destiny said, his dad emailed me back after I told him that I knew what his son was doing. His first email was denial, I think. And then after that, I confronted him again. His next email was basically saying his son was very intelligent, that I would do good to befriend him and that I shouldn't say mean things about his family. Basically, the father had shirked all responsibility. He wasn't assuring me whatsoever that he was going to keep his child from doing anything again. And then later on, he sent me another email claiming his whole family of lawyers was going to take me to court and send me back to the carpet cleaning because of the mean things I was saying to his son online. 
So on top of all of this going on, I had three independent interviews with the FBI trying to figure out how to stop this from going on. Of course, every interview with the FBI dead ends as soon as they found out you play video games because they no longer take it seriously, even if you state you've lost over $5,000 in business. So I never had anything there. So I guess if you put yourself in my position, I'm pretty much being forced out of work by a person at their leisure for whatever reason, and I'm just losing thousands and thousands of dollars. I can't pay my bills. I never got that bad or I couldn't pay my bills, but like I'm losing thousands and thousands of dollars. I can't work. I know where the kid lives. I know all of his information. Um, I've contacted his parent and his dad won't do anything to stop him. So yeah, I got fuck pretty fucking irritated. I don't know if, if like this is comparable to like rape or some other type of like aggravated assault, but not even because at least in those cases, you can go and find somebody to help you. But I was completely out of my luck here. Um, I would have just, I just have to sit in my house and watch my internet connection get roasted every single night. I wasn't able to stream, it wasn't right. So I don't know if any of this ends up working out as a justification for killing somebody in their family. Probably not. I do get a little bit extreme on my stream sometimes and I do exaggerate things. But I mean, for the most part, I'll take credit for what I say. I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, you know, I never even thought about it or whatever. Because that would be a lie. I was very, very fucking frustrated with this kid and I had exhausted every single legal option. Is that a justification for killing someone? Probably not. It's probably not a good reason to do it. Okay. And then it looks like he makes another statement here. In December 2017, Stephen said of the controversy, yeah, the kid I wanted to kill, I still stand by that. Fuck that dude and his family. The problem you've got with this is, so this here, right? I would, I would interpret this being in the mind that it's a longer statement. This is probably like Destiny's, in my mind, like true position on it, right? Like this is like his thought out. I've thought about this. This is what I think. When is this from? August 2017, and he's responding to a criticism about it, right? This here, in, de <laughs> in December 2017, Stephen said of the controversy, yeah, the kid I wanted to kill, I still stand by that. Fuck that dude and his family. <laughs> <laughs> so to me, and listen, I know I'm going to get accused of being a fucking white blood cell. At this point, I embrace it, okay? I literally don't fucking care anymore. I doesn't, I've, every fucking angle I've gone down, it doesn't matter, right? Even if I criticize Destiny, I'm still somehow a white blood cell. So who fucking cares at this point, right? This is like the, pro, this is before the Giga Chad thing was a meme. This is like a proto Giga Chad thing, right? This is like, say, I'd imagine that this was probably said in anger, in response or frustration to someone saying something. And it's like one of those hyperbolic statements that he makes or something like that, right? So to me, I would see this as probably, as I, like I said, this to me, I think is probably his true thought out position. This is probably in response to someone saying something. He's like, yeah, fuck that guy, you know? I don't know. That probably is how I would view that personally. Anyway, let's continue. <clears throat> okay, speaking to two streamers named Mr. Metica and Andy Worski, Stephen said the FBI had refused to help and that a lawsuit would have been too expensive. Destiny. So I was basically completely out of options. So pretty much at this point in my life, my Metica. So you went with the next option, murder. Stephen, well, I'm curious. So I'll spin it to you. What else would you do at this point? What would you do at this point? Would you just quit your whole career and go do something else? Or just to be clear, I don't think I was legitimately planning to murder him. I was just incredibly fucking frustrated. You keep saying you were though. You've got a streamer who's admitting that he tracked down information on a miner to find out where he lives. That streamer owns a gun and he's shown that gun multiple times on stream. He's made numerous statements that he had a plan to follow or kill this child and that he was isn't remorseful about it. My question is, how the fuck did the FBI not come to talk to you about that rather than the kid bombing your stream? I don't know, my dude. On March 12, 2023, Destiny again argued that lethal force against the DDoS kid would have been justified during a debate with Islam with a streamer named Karantos. <laughs> Karantos is in the article! <laughs> no fucking way! Karantos is in the fucking article. That is hilarious. 
Karantos has literally only just started interacting with Destiny on, on his own on his stream. Karantos cannot be stopped. He is unstoppable. He's making such a splash. He's in Mr. Girl's article. Incredible. Krantos, aren't you the same man that wanted to kill somebody for DDoSing you a few years ago? I wouldn't say that it's an insane line that it's impossible. Of course, if you don't consider yourself normal, then ignore everything that I'm saying. Destiny. Am I the same man who wanted to kill somebody who was cutting away all of my income, who I had no recourse to the FBI police, when I had a child support and a house to care for, and a guy was basically slashing my tires every single day when I was trying to go to work? Yeah, I was getting pretty desperate in that situation, correct? You're trying to prove a point. Hang on a second. I would imagine the context of this is probably Karantos is trying to say, well, you did this. Therefore, isn't it understandable that someone would want to kill someone over pitching, posting a picture of the Prophet Allah? Right. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'd imagine that's probably the line of reasoning that Karantos is trying to use. So I'll read the rest of it. Right. But it seems to me like what's happening here is Karantos is saying, hey, Here's a situation you were in when you did that. And Destiny is responding by saying, well, here's why the situation isn't the same. Right? I actually, Destiny is saying, I had some sort of, you know, justification or there was actually a reason that you could argue was reasonable that I would want to do this. And there isn't the same reason in someone wanting to kill someone over a picture of the Prophet Muhammad. Right? I mean, that would be my guess. Muhammad is the prophet. Wait, I'm not allowed to say his name. Anyway. <clears throat> Basically, uh, what are talking about? Yeah, I was getting pretty desperate in that situation. Correct. You're trying to prove a point. Okay, so let me go get somewhere. So are you, you are comfortable with not only violence, but killing somebody even though they didn't hurt you physically or they didn't do anything to you other than cut your source of income? You were 100% comfortable with killing somebody. Yeah, I guess if somebody was cutting your source of income every day that you used to support your family, then yeah, I probably would. Yeah, go for it. If you came outside every single day and some guy was slashing your tires and he wouldn't stop and you called the police and nobody wanted to do anything, despite having proof for it, and you're like, well, fuck, I'm going to have to attack this dude and maybe even kill him. Yeah, sure, go for it. I think it's okay. What's Do you know what's funny about this? Mr. Girl has managed to loop back round to the 2020 discourse on whether or not it's acceptable to use violence against someone that is um, stealing from you or, her, you know, causing harm to your property or whatever. This is exactly the same discourse that happened back in 2020 and all the leftoids were freaking out, you know, because Destiny was saying, if someone's trying to fuck with your income, um, it's okay to use like force against them, which is actually the first time I was on stream with Destiny, I think, on that panel, on that Prime Kai panel way back when. What is gay? What's funny? That's what's funny about it. It's just funny how it's like a, you know, what is the George Lucas thing? It rhymes, you know, again and again. Anyway, let's continue on. So you're telling me that because you were DDoSed and you weren't able to provide for your family, you would 100% resort and you would justify, you would still stand by it today because, yeah, of course. So till this day, you stand by it. Um, because there's plenty of things that you say you do not stand by that you cringe at because it happened in the past. So is this not one of those things? No, this is something I would stand by absolutely. This is an easy yeah, of course. When discussing this story, fans of Destiny tend to either agree with his rationalization or they dismiss it as hyperbole. Okay, we got some YouTube comments. We got some YouTube comments to read. <laughs> I mean, I guess the thing with this is like, yeah, of course people are going to have comments on it and perspectives. Why Why do you find the need? Uh, okay. Twenty seventeen YouTube comment fifty likes. From twenty seventeen, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, Max. If you ever listen to this, okay, my advice to you. I think there's probably going to be a lot of bloat in this article. And the first thing that I'm seeing that I would consider bloat is using YouTube comments. Who even is this YouTube uh, YouTuber? I'm not even going to fucking... I just, should, do I need to read all of this? This is fucking insane, man. 
For example, if someone was stealing your stuff, you'd justifiably be angry and have a right to defend yourself from the next time it happened. Look at, look at the sidebar, man. Look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I'm not reading the comments, man. That's too much. I can't do it. It's too much. It's, it's, I need to get through this, man. I'm supposed to be going out for dinner tonight, for fuck's sake. I'm supposed to be going out for fucking dinner tonight, and now I'm reading this shit. Jesus Christ. I'm supposed to be ending the stream in two hours. Oh, my God. Okay, well, let's get through. Hopefully, we can, hopefully we can finish it in two hours. Hopefully, we can finish it in two hours. We'll see. I'm not reading them. If you want to read them, you can read them yourself, okay? I'm going to have to cut out whole swathes of the article. Stuff like the fucking Bob Seven stuff, I do not know anything about that, okay? I, if I don't know anything about it, as in I don't know it exists, I'll read it, okay? If I don't know about the Bob Seven shit, I, 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 I can't really read that because I don't know what happened, all right? I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to read it and not comment on it. I don't know whether to fucking... I don't know what to do, okay? I'm figuring this out as I go. Okay, Mia Rose. On January 1st, 2012, when Stephen was 23, he drunkenly groped the breasts of adult actress and fellow streamer Mia Rose during a live stream. Why? Okay. What is the point of bringing this up? I know it's bad, obviously. Okay, hot take. Touching someone's breasts without their permission, even if you're in a sexual relationship with them, is bad. Okay? I'm pretty sure that Destiny, after has said multiple times it was wrong to do, I'm pretty sure that, like, the Mia Rose person has said that, you know, oh, yeah, it was bad, but it's fine, it's in the past. Okay. And at the time, and she did voluntarily sit on his lap during the stream, but the groping was unwanted. Stephen has consistently acknowledged this incident as a sexual assault, though he tends to joke about it. What? You're never allowed to joke about bad things you've done. That's rich coming from Mr. Girl, isn't it? Anyway, listen, here's the situation, okay? Right, every time Destiny talks about this, he needs to do this. Guys. Guys, you remember that time back in 2012 where I grabbed that person's breasts against their wishes? That was a terrible and horrific sexual assault. And I should not have done it. And I feel terrible about it. There's not a day that goes by. There's not a day that goes by that I do not think about the horrendous and vicious sexual assault that I perpetuated. Okay? Like what, obviously if, if something bad happened 12 years ago that was, you know, what, you're allowed to joke about it at some point, right? Listen, maybe the day after it happened, it's a bit too soon, but 12 years after the fact, as long as, as, long as the person is like, yeah, it was fucked up, but whatever, everyone was drunk or whatever, is it not? I don't know, man. It just seems crazy to me that you've got to like, what? Every time you mention it, you need to, you can't joke about it. Like, who fucking cares? So it's just a relevant detail. And also, this is so long ago. Why are we even fucking talking about this? Does anyone think that what Destiny did was good, by the way? Does anyone think what Destiny did was good? Does anyone think it was based? Like, everyone says it was bad. Like, what is the point of putting this in here? It just feels like, and the reason I'm criticizing it is it just feels like, right, let's find all the bad shit that Destiny's ever done in his career and put it in an article, you know? It's like it's like Kiwi Farms, but with a with a sheen of virtuosity. It's like this. Well, it's it's like righteous indignation. Well, I'm I'm documenting all of this, but it's for good reasons. It's to show that he's an abuser. That seems to be so far what I'm getting from this. It's soy kiwi farms. Yes, exactly. Okay. Let's continue anyway. In 2022, he suggested that he may have been a victim to peer pressure to drink that night. I'm going to be completely honest. That was a stream where everybody in that stream was encouraging me to drink. 
way more than I ever had before. Did I do dumb shit on the stream? Yeah, for sure. I wish I was a woman, so I didn't have any accountability for my actions, though. Mia Rose has occasionally tweeted about the incident. July 4th, 2020. It was years ago, but I chalked it up to being young and everyone had too much to drink and wanted to be around these people to get my name out. I know Destiny is toxic, but I have no issues with him. November 13th, 2022, it happened. I did nothing at the time. It was way before there was any info in my world about what it w was right and wrong. I thought I'd put myself into that situation, but at the end of the day, he did assault me. He has apologized and we left it alone. On March 14th, 2023, Mia Rose tweeted, would love an apology. I don't think he ever will, but every everyone that was there, hell, even just the stream viewers could see. We didn't make him drink. We were all drinking. And that isn't a pass to grab anyone on live stream. That whole trip was odd. Link, he hasn't apologised on streams and such. Indirectly, it's fine. I know he regrets it. Based on the public statements, neither Mia, Mia Rose nor Destiny seems to think this event was a big deal, but I've included it nonetheless for the sake of completeness. This is just soy kiwi farms. Why would you... If you think it's... If neither party thinks it's a big deal, why the fuck would you bother including it then? This is just like... Exactly like I just said. Soy kiwi farms. Let's just document all the bad shit Destiny's ever done, man. So stupid. Wasn't the whole fucking premise that Destiny... I mean, okay. What was it he said to... What was it Mr. Girl said to in DMs? He said to in DMs to Doobie, he was talking... What was it? He picks his victims well. I know that Mr. Girl has tried to walk back the um, Harvey Weinstein take as well. He's tried to walk back the Harvey Weinstein take on the basis of, well, I don't mean he's Harvey Weinstein is in the women thing. I just mean that this is going to be, you know, a very foundational case for streamer ethics or something. So, you know, what are we left with now? Oh, we're including an incident that happened 12 years ago that neither that both party recognizes was wrong. Everyone's moved on from and no one really cares about anymore for completeness. Like, give me a fucking break, man. It is insane. Anyway, Blue T. Blue T was a competitive StarCraft II streamer like Steven. In August 2012, she logged into his Twitter and tweeted out photos of his genitals. She posted the following explanation to Destiny's subreddit. I don't know anything about this. This is brand new for me. This is brand new for me. I'll come out and say this is blue tea. I really have nothing to lose. Long story short, Stephen leaked nude pictures of me to his Skype friends. He then joked about how fucking hideous my face is compared to my beautiful body. They joked about how I look like Shrek. I do have a big nose, I guess. Someone who apparently was in the chat room emailed me from a Gmail account consisting of a bunch of random numbers. It had the chat log. When I confronted him about it, he first feigned ignorance. When it became clear he was then just going to ignore me, I snapped. I had his email password from when I used to help schedule his lessons. I changed his email password, which enabled me to change his Twitter and Skype passwords. I have a folder full of dick pics, and because I'm so nice, tried to choose the most flattering to post. My actions resulted from the build-up of many things he's done to me that I don't have time to mention, but his betrayal of my trust was the last straw. I hope you enjoy his penis. Wait, what do you mean, change stream title? Mr. Girl article on Destiny is finally out, going over it now. What? I don't know what else I could change it to that's going to get more views. I don't know what else I could change it to oh. that's going to get more views. I don't know what... Anyway. My actions dropped from the build of many things he's done to me that I don't have time to mention, but his betrayal of my trust is the last straw. I hope you enjoy his penis. TLD, I don't leave you with me because I'll steal your Twitter and post pictures of your dick. Okay, I need to... <laughs> no, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. I, wait, if I click that link, am I going to see Destiny's cock? If I click that link, am I going to see Destiny's cock and balls? I do not want to see Destiny's cock and balls. 
I'm not looking at Destiny's cock. I'm never going to see Destiny's cock. I'm not interested in any part of Destiny's fucking genitalia. I'm not looking at it, okay? I don't care if it's cut, uncut, size, nothing. No thank you, okay? If I want to see a dick, I'll look at mine when I go to the fucking toilet, thank you very much, okay? I don't want to see his penis. No thank you. No, I, I can't do it. The thought of it is weird, okay? I'm not doing it. No, stop getting me to click the link. I'm homophobic now. That's it. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Stephen responded within 11 minutes. Was to two people, not an entire chat room of people, two people that I consider pretty close friend. I never feigned ignorance. I just didn't want to get into it right before an MLG. <laughs> He's thinking of the Sigma grind set, isn't he? He's thinking of the Sigma grind set. I need to be in the game. I need to be in the fucking game. All right, I have time for this bullshit. I can't imagine how you think people will never, ever, ever talk about anything personal or private amongst their friends. Maybe I'm just stupid, but I can't see myself caring at all if you shared pictures between your close friends, especially given the fact that I'd never see any of them in real life. Glad you think you have a right to every single private conversation I ever have, though. Posting pictures of my dick to 37,000 people and cutting me off from access to my email Twitter is probably reasonable payback for me discuss discussing something personal with two friends. Thanks for the new work location. I wonder what your boss will think of this, or your dean for that matter. I wonder if it would affect your scholarship or financial aid. Within the next several hours, Blue T deleted a Reddit account Stephen dropped out of a tournament he was playing in. The response from Stephen's fan was overwhelmingly negative, but he doubled down in another comment. It's not about teaching someone a lesson, it's just punishment. I'm pretty sure what she did was illegal on quite a few levels. And the fact that it's damaging to a business that I used to support my family makes me a little less willing to turn the other cheek. Yeah, I acted pretty scumbaggish and I shared a picture with a couple of friends, but for her to leak a bunch of shit to 40k people, why on earth wouldn't I share that with her employer in school when she tried to effectively destroy my livelihood? Fans were quick to point out that nude pictures were unlikely to harm his career. You really think you'll take a serious financial hit from this? I imagine you might lose a reasonable number of Twitter followers, but I'd be surprised if this really hurts your stream, even in the short term. Erisan, Stephen's then girlfriend, who was not aware of being sexy with Blue Tea, made a supportive public statement asking fans to stop ta talking about the incident for Stephen's sake. A commentator asked her, how does it feel to come home from a long day of shift work and live with a piece of shit? How does it feel to know that he's cheating on you who was trying to pick up women at the bar last night? Eris Amris replied, languished, forlorn, bereft, desolate, thank you. So did he actually email anyone about this? Also, can we just talk about the fact that whilst obviously, yeah, it is, um, you know, fucked to like share nudes of someone that's been sent to you in private with a couple of people like the response here is fucking insane to post pictures of your fucking dick to like randomly on the internet to thirty seven thousand people is fucking insane like what am i supposed to take from this i do like you know it's just like i'm looking at this and i'm thinking yeah, it's obviously wrong. Like, out of the things that are happening, there's one big thing here that I'm seeing that's really fucking wrong in all of this, okay? And that is putting the picture of his dick on the internet to his followers. That is revenge porn. That is, like, definitionally revenge porn. So, like, I'm reading this and I'm thinking, whilst I, you know, obviously don't agree with sharing private nudes with people, whilst, you know, I think the idea of emailing people about it, I'm not really for that sort of thing, that's not for me, I can at least understand why someone might be in a position where they think, oh my god, this person's really fucked me over, so I'm going to fuck them over. Like, this person shared private pictures to, to tens of thousands of people. Yeah, it was just, he did a scummy thing, definitely, but, like... Her actions are pretty fucking bad, no? I don't know. I just don't understand. Like, I'm reading this and I'm thinking, well, am I supposed to be on her side? <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's, she's fucking fucked in the head.
Anyway, let's, uh, we're never going to finish this if we don't continue on. So we'll just try and continue on as best we can. Right. Here we go. Melina. In February 2019, when Stephen was 30... <laughs> Can I? Sorry, there's one other thing I want to point out with these two stories too, okay? I feel like some of this stuff is obviously, you know, criticizable. I don't know if... I don't think Destiny... Like, I feel like some of this stuff is like Destiny's done some shit in the past, which is worthy of criticism but like in 2023 would destiny do that now i think i think obviously you know i've got some perspectives on some of destiny's coomerism which i've expressed publicly and even talked to him about directly but that this level this level of like behavior that's being engaged in i just i just don't know if i it feels like someone's you know if someone can grow from something do you know what i mean someone can grow and learn and be like oh that's kind of fucked up that i did that or something do you know what i mean i don't know it just feels a bit like we're kind of going way back to the it's like we're going way back to the worst examples of his behavior right we're having to dredge up 10 year old um situations and it's like yeah that sucks but like we're 10 years ahead you know like if we're 10 years ahead do we not take that into account of maybe someone developing, growing and pushing forward? Like, I don't know. That's my perspective on those two things. Anyway, let's get into the Melina thing, okay? Especially, I mean, obviously, if, if someone raped a child 10 years ago, yeah, you might be will it, you might be wanting to dish out a more severe criticism or even maybe not want to associate with someone like that. But if it's 10 years old and the stuff that's happening is this level and it probably is likely that you wouldn't do it again, then it's a bit like, well... Okay, I guess it's there. You can criticize it. But beyond that, what do you do? Anyway, continue. Melina, in February 2019. By the way, guys, don't be don't be shy with the super chats as I'm going through this, okay? I am absolutely flagrantly just fucking wanting to rinse this for as much money as I possibly can. So if you're wanting to support me, please do. My reading voice um, gets it gets refreshed every time I get a bit of support, okay? Win begging. We are win begging today. That is true. We are win begging today. Okay. Let's continue. Melina. In February 2019, when Stephen was 30, he flew to New Zealand to meet two young Swedish fans he'd been speaking to for months. Melina and her boyfriend Max were 20 and 19 years old and in a polyamorous relationship. Max played the role of the cameraman for much of the live stream ch trip. Cuck POV. Okay, no memes. Get serious. Looking on awkwardly as Stephen made advances on Melina. At one point, Stephen left Max in charge of the stream while he and Melina went into the bedroom and shut the door. Max joked that he was being cucked. Vocal... <laughs> Vocalizations can be heard in the background after that. Most fans agree they are sex sounds, but Destiny maintains he and Melina were not having sex. This was after Max had admitted on stream that Melina was his only partner, casting doubt on the legitimacy of his poly identification. I've got to be honest, that sounds that sounds like a cuck in denial. I got to be real with you. That sounds like a cuck in denial, okay? A user in Stephen's subreddit posted, The polygamy isn't what's off-putting about these streams. What's off-putting is that a 30-year-old man who claims to understand power dynamics flew halfway across the globe to have sex with young women who have previously developed parasocial relationships with him. 692 upvotes. <laughs> okay, let's continue on. Melina eventually broke up with Max and moved to the United States to live with Stephen. They had an open relationship and were married in December 2021. Initially boosted by her association with Stephen, Melina has become a successful streamer in her own right, focusing on travel, fitness and showing off her body. Stephen has described himself as psychologically abusive in relationships. 
In January 2021, he said, I'm a really rough person to be in a relationship with, okay? Anybody that survives a relationship with me, I mean, when it comes to psychological abuse, I think Mr. Girl has got a lot of expertise, so we should probably listen to what he's got to say about this. Anybody that survives a relationship with me for more than like six months, okay, props to that person because they're going through some severe fucking psychological abuse. It's a fucking hard thing to deal with. I'm not joking. Destiny has publicly stated that he has access to Melina's Discord account and is thus privy to her communications with others in the streaming world. On January 14th, 2021, Destiny said on stream they both have access to each other's DMs, but the Melina's Genesee may dissuade her from reading his. In 2022, Destiny is re was revealed to be hiding a serious affair as well as a, sext a sexting relationship from Melina, both of which use Discord DMs as a primary form of communication. Is that... Is that what is rumoured to be... I've read the, the Kiwi Farms thing about it, okay? Let's, is that... Is, is that who I think it is? Don't say the name! Don't say any... No names, okay? A certain... A certain Nazi bimbo. Let's put it that way. <laughs> anyway, come on. Let's continue on. God, it feels terrible to be... <laughs> Look, I've got to laugh about it, okay? I've got to laugh about it. It's funny, all right? I can't help it, all right? It is what it is. Anyway, let's continue on. Friends and viewers of Stephen have voiced suspicions that he sometimes impersonates Melina by sending private messages from her account. Okay. <laughs> have they? I've never heard that before. Melina has told multiple people that the pain of their relationship drives her to thoughts of suicide and these conflicts frequently spill into public view. Okay. Right, let's continue on. I mean, I, I mean, where, what even, like, okay. What value is this? Friends and viewers of Stephen have voiced suspicion. So fucking what? This is, this is like Kiwi Farms tier, you know? <laughs> like, oh, some friends have said something. Like, I don't know, man. Anyway, let's continue on, okay? Bob Seven. No, this report is antagonistic as to Bob Seven's character or whether he sexually harassed any woman. And this section is included... Oh, agnostic, sorry. Agnostic to, as to whether Bob Seven's character or whether he sexually harassed any woman. And this section is included to hide Destiny's behavior and use of his platform. Sorry, I read it wrong. Retard moment. British schooling system. We may not have guns, but we uh, train retards. Do I need to read the Bob Seven section? I'm going to read it. I'm just going to read it. I'm not going to... Just to be clear, I'm not going to have any takes on this because I don't know the ins and outs of the Bob Seven stuff. I'm reading it so I can say that I've read the article in its totality, aside from maybe some YouTube comments, and I'm just for in inclusion's sake, Okay. I'm just going to read it, and that's it. Before my conversation with Melina in January 2022, Stephen leaned into the doorway behind her and said, don't let him mind fuck you. I couldn't understand why he said that until I did my research for this story. Bob Seven, a smaller streamer, was Melina's confidant for most of 2020 when he was 25 and she was 22. His ostensible goal was to improve her mental health, and he compared their relationship to that of a, as a therapist, a patient. They also sexted. Melina shared intimate details of her relationship with Stephen, including how his treatment of her made her feel suicidal. She also told Bob private stories about Stephen's past. Believing that Stephen was manipulative or abusive, Bob encouraged Melina to either confront him or leave the relationship. One time when she did confront him, Stephen asked if the confrontation had been Bob's idea. Eventually, Melina fell in love with Bob, hinting that she would only be able to leave Stephen if she had another relationship to flee to. Bob was not interested in Melina. He was, however, interested in Bose, the 28-year-old the stream, female streamer who was also dating Stephen. Bob and Bose became fast friends, gossiping daily about the dysfunctional relationship between Stephen and Melina. Sometimes the gossiping took the form of Bob actively warming Bose and Stephen's manipulative nature and telling her the secrets he'd learned from Melina. You may have figured this out already, but Melina isn't fond of sharing Stephen with other women, and Stephen doesn't like to deal with the emotional backlash from Melina. 
But because of Bob's meddling, Bose and Melina had to come to hate each other and both were wary of Stephen. Eventually, the two women would meet and compare notes on Bob. They realised he was prone to shit-talking behind each of their backs and decided it was he who was manipulative after all. I'm going to pronounce it my way because I like it better. And not Stephen. Apparently, it didn't occur to them both uh, men might be manipulative. Bose, Bose bluntly informed Bob that she no longer wished to be friends. Melina confronted him about the degrading things he had said about her, like saying a stream was best watched with the sound off. Bob's grip on the women in Stephen's life had finally been loosened. At this point, Stephen decided to use his platform to destroy Bob. On January 3rd, 2021, Destiny engineered a group call, including six women who knew Bob, and with the help of one of the women, secretly recorded the others talking about their experiences with Bob. Destiny's opening salvo was a Genu January 4th, 2021 stream uploaded with the title Bob Seven Allegations Involving Melina, Big Boss Bose, Peach and More, in which he painted Bob as a malicious womanizer out of, out of torpedo Stephen's personal relationships. During the stream, Stephen described his strategy for gaining control of the situation. I play a little Death Note game where I'm having Melina send certain messages to Bob, and now I'm reading messages between Bob and Melina because I can read Melina's DMs. Bose is sending me messages between her and Bob so I can read those. He is pulling all the strings. He's the puppet master. He end Has Destiny got any Jewish uh, background in him? Anyway, he ended the video with a threat. Should Bob Seven attempt to defend himself? If it ever, like... If push comes to shove, there is a lot of really, 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 like, this is all kind of like dumb shit. Really fucked up shit. Fuck that Bob Seven did that. Even people in his personal life didn't fucked. But that will probably never see the light of day. I shouldn't actually say that because, like, now I'm, like, teasing it. But if Bob Seven decides to try and make some response video, like, vindicating himself, I'll probably just nuke that shit from orbit. Bob countered with a 40-page document containing dozens of screenshots to paint a picture of Stephen as an emotional abuser trying to shut down Bob's genuine concerns about the woman in his life. This was fairly successful and had Stephen uncharacteristically on the defensive for a moment. But with Stephen's second and final attack, Bob's fate would be sealed. These fucking, the way this is written is fucking brilliant, man. Bob's fate would be sealed. The video, streamed January 17th, 2021, was titled Bob Seven Manifesto Addressing My Allegations. It currently sits at more than 700,000 views. In the video, he read aloud a document he'd written titled The Bob Seven Manifesto, which again painted Bob as a slimy sexual harasser. He also played clips in the January 3rd call, some of which Destiny has edited to make them look more damning of Bob. Two days before the stream, one of the women who'd been secretly recorded in the January 3rd call released a statement recounting the allegations Destiny had publicised in the first video. Hours before the stream on January 17th, she pleaded on Twitter to be left out of Destiny's upcoming second strike. The following is a message to Destiny. I have no way of contacting him myself, so I have to post this publicly. Hi, Destiny. This clip came into my knowledge this morning. I just wanted to let you know that I do not consent to any public spreading of any call or recording I'm in. I do not wish to be any part of what you plan to release and doing so will be without my consent. I do not want to be part of this further at all. Please do not harass me. Thanks. Ophelia Bear. Okay. Destiny ignored her request, opting instead to poke holes in a statement exonerating Bob. Referring to her as Ophelia the Manipulated, Destiny said that Bob had manipulated her into withdrawing an allegation that he'd sexually harassed her. At the end of the section, he wrote, I'd like to make it clear, I really do not hold Ophelia Bear as personally responsible for a 180. I think she's a victim in all of this. And Bob Seven, Casey Tron and Minx have played a role in her manipulation, convincing her that it isn't in the best interest to side with Bob Seven here. Play the clip. Oh my fucking God. Okay, what is this clip? But the thing is, if like push comes to shove, I will. So that's going to be like included in my do new doc. So like the drunkenly harassing Ophelia for nudes while talking shit about her to like four other women. And then the uh, leaking nudes of uh, an anonymous person in Molina to Bose that she was active, that he was actively shit talking about Molina and the other person too. Like uh, that'll be like in this next doc. Mm -hmm. I really didn't think that he would.
Wait, this is a clip by Bob Seven. <laughs> Little, I, listen, I don't know about the Bob Seven stuff, so I am completely in the dark as to what all this is. I'm just fucking reading it, so it's included, okay? That's just a little funny thing to note. Anyway, let's continue on, okay? <clears throat> Ellie Moon, another woman on the recorded call, complained about Destiny using a name in this video. Destiny claimed that Bob, Bob had leaked one of Ellie Moon's nudes, which Elemon did not believe. On January 18th, 2021, Destiny wrote that in his public chat, redacted as Elemon. Fuck me, man. I should have trusted my instinct and not read all this. This is literally, I just, I'm so lost on any of this shit. I just, I'm like. But now I've started, so I'll finish. By the way, if you guys wanted that, what a snaky piece of shit. Might release an unedited, unmasked audio later. Literally every single girl ended up flipping sides, except for Melina, Pichachu, Bose, and Erisan, just my original friends. Destiny had sexual relationships with Melina, Bose, and Erisan. The same day, in a stream confrontation between Destiny and Ellie Moon, they had the following exchange. Ellie Moon, shut the fuck up, dude. I said, like, leave me out of this. Destiny, I never mentioned your name. Nobody knew you were here until you tweeted it, honey. Ellie Moon, oh my God, talking to a groomer, talking about Bob being creepy when you started dating Melina. Look how, f this is ridiculous, man. Look at this. Look, I'm only up here. Fuck me. I can't. I can't stream. I can't. I can't I, I'm going out tonight. I've got plans tonight. I can't fucking. I'm not going to cancel my plans to sit here and read a fucking autistic article. Okay. That's insane. I'll have to break it up. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to break this up. I can't do it all now. It's too much. Cancel it. Are you serious? Cancel your real life plans for this. You're fucking delusional. Absolutely not. Are you fucking seriously saying that? Get the fuck out of here, you retards. Fuck me. I, it, look, even if I sit here and read all of this, this is at least like 10 hours. Even if I cancel my plans, I'm not going to stream until I finish reading this. That's also insane. God, you people are unbelievable. Anyway, I just, this is, I'm just going to keep reading. I'll figure, I'll figure something out, okay? Okay. Okay, well, listen, keep the, keep the money coming. As long as the money keeps flowing, then, yeah, obviously I'll keep reading, okay? Right. Destiny has sexual relationship with Melina Bose and Erisan. The same day in a stream confrontation with Destiny and Ellie Moon, the following exchange. Shut the fuck up, dude. I said, like, leave me out of this. Destiny, I never mentioned your name. Nobody knew you were here until you tweeted it, honey. Ella Moon, oh my God, talking to a groomer. Talking about Bob Seven being creepy when you started dating Melina when she was like 18 and you were like, what, 40 million years old? Like, actual weirdo. Destiny, dude, I know so much personal information about you. Why are you trying to take shots at me right now? Are you serious? I don't want to sound like I'm threatening anybody, but like, you should slow down on the personal insults because you're like way out of your league, dude. You're the way fuck out of your league. Casey Tron, another female streamer Destiny secretly recorded in a private call, was frustrated that he'd framed her talking about another woman's experience with Bob as her making his, her own allegations. In response to a public skepticism about the veracity of Destiny's claims, in his Bob Seven Manifesto stream, Destiny had gone on an unconvincing tirade about how she betrayed their friendship by having the audacity to put her fucking nose into this. A January 21st post in Destiny's subreddit titled Casey Tron Defends Bob Seven Behind the Scenes Saying Harassment Allegations Are Lies earned 553 upvotes. The top... Co okay, 
What is this cringe of like saying how many upvotes it's got, man? That is fucking insane. The top comment with 210 upvotes reads, Casey, all you had to do was stick your head in the sand and fucking ignore the drama and let Bob Seven go down in flames. You didn't have to get involved at all, but you threw yourself into the coffin while we were luring Bob Seven in for pretty much no reason. I hope it was worth it. Destiny's video was compelling enough to tilt public opinion back in his favor and destroy Bob's reputation. Bob released a 60-page document along with a nine-hour response video meticulously detailing all of Destiny's inaccuracies and misleading audio edits, which Destiny ignored. Destiny's audience and adjacent communities, having bought into Destiny's version of events, also ignored Bob's response, largely leaving it, uns la leaving it largely unseen. Bob did attempt to return to streaming, but he has since deleted all of his stream VODs and, made video and videos made after October 2020. I included Bob's story because it shows Destiny's willingness to use his platform to crush his girlfriend's best friend for personal reasons and then to lash out at the woman who refused to be used as pawns. I also relate to the story on a personal level. Last summer, in August of 2022, Melina reached out to me for emotional support. She told me essentially the same thing she told Bob and asked me why Destiny treats her the way he does. Jesus Christ, that... Ooh, Jesus, what the fuck? We spoke a few times, but essentially I said I thought Destiny was a very guarded person and that she should discuss it with a therapist. Yeah, I would have thought it would have included some screenshots or something, but... Um, yeah. Anyway, unlike Bob, while I was pretty worried about Melina, I didn't think I could do much to help her, much less while sexting her. I've tried that before in my life to no avail. I also had a sense that I was perilously close to an invisible line. When you upset Destiny, you don't get an angry DM. You hear about it the next day on his stream. Melina, the betrayer. Obviously, I can't speak on that without any evidence. I've just got to, that's what he's claiming happened, right? Okay. Right. Anna, here we go. Destiny shows Mr. Girl DMs include part where he says this is mentally destroying Anna and laughs, then corrects himself. And when he says he wasn't holding a hostage, but then she says that he currently is. In October 2019, Anna was 29 and had no social media following. Before ever meeting Stephen, Anna tweeted about how he lacks empathy and probably has a personality disorder. In another streamer's chat, she criticised Stephen's repeated casual sex with no interest in an intimate relationship. By January of 2022, she had somewhat warmed to Stephen. She messaged him on Instagram and introduced herself as a graduate student in psychology. According to Anna, Stephen asked if she was familiar with open relationships. Given his open relationship with Melina, Anna took the question to be a sexual overture to which she was receptive. On May 22nd, 2020, Anna and Stephen did their first stream together a debate about open relationships. With the audience unaware of their sexting, Anna introduced the topic as just some research that I was recently reading about and presented research indicating that non-monogamy is correlated with predatory personality traits such as nar narcissism and Machiavellianism. Oh, thanks for the 50 Amer Australian dollars. Appreciate that. They soon did a second stream about altruism in which Anna argued that doing things for other people increases psychological well-being in my opinion, because she wanted to challenge Stephen's lack of empathy. That summer, Stephen proposed that he visit Anna for a week. Okay. Anna agreed, but she expressed concern that he would grow distant or even cut her off after they had sex. Stephen assured her, I understand the concern, but that would be a huge time investment just to hook up with someone. A week before the scheduled meeting, Anna and Stephen did a third stream, a debate about whether dark triad antisocial personality traits are correlated with open relationships. For the first 90 minutes, Anna tried to convince Stephen that people in open relationships have trust issues and avoidment attachment patterns. Not taking the bait, Stephen kept the conversation intellectual. Anna commented that his judgment might be impaired because the topic hits close to home. Stephen called this a power play and they argued about it for two hours. Eventually, Anna started crying and told him he was being abusive. At the end of the conversation, Anna said Stephen should ban any chatters who called her abusive and manipulative. He avoided the suggestion. 
In mid-August, the week of Melina's 22nd birthday, Stephen... Ooh, curious. I wonder... Uh... What's the reason for including that particular detail? Curious. <laughs> Stephen and Anna spent several days in a hotel together. They had sex, talked, and he did the normal streams from the hotel room. During an agreement to keep the visit a secret, Anna briefly streamed from the hotel room as well, effectively outing their sexual relationship. She would let her claim this was unintentional, but I'm skeptical. Okay, listen, guys, I just, I need to get through this, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm warming to the idea of cancelling my plans. <laughs> I'm warming to the idea of cancelling my plans, okay? I've got to say, I've got to say, because I just want to get door one and done on this. Keep the money flowing. Keep the money flowing. Okay. And we'll see. Anna asked Stephen. Anna has described Stephen as having a revenge kink where manipulative dynamics involving lying and blackmail are fetishized. And I mention it now because the rest of the story will make a lot more sense if you're aware of this. At the end of the week, Stephen left to join Melina in Sweden. From the airport, he DM'd Anna. Okay, about to board my first flight. Thanks for the past few days, Anna. I had a lot of fun. She replied, I did too, Stephen. Safe, have safe flight. Talk to you later. But the next day she wrote, oh boy, I'm pretty sad. It just kind of hit me today out of nowhere. I also feel angry with you because you did make it sound like you're more poly and willing to date other people. Your lifestyle choices are extremely abnormal and not at all like most poly people. I mean, do you really just see me as a friend still? How is that even possible to be that callous and cold, Stephen? I don't want to believe that you are. He replied, hmm, I mean, as a friend still, I mean, what do you mean? I mean, sex stuff aside, having met you in real life and talked and gone around and stuff, you're definitely a way closer friend than you were before for sure. Anna responded with several messages containing increasingly sharp criticisms. How are you so cold and callous? Years of being... Um, Years of getting shit on by women. That's my secret. Anna responded with several messages containing increasingly sharp criticisms, accumulating in the fact that you feel entitled to get sex from tons of different people, but not have to meet their emotional needs, which are sexual needs, is textbook narcissism. It's extreme entitlement and selfishness that enables a person to treat other human beings the way you do. It's morally reprehensible. So we're just doing, we're doing like a whole recap. I guess he's got to sort of tear up to you know, say that sexting Anna was bad, right? Over the next few days, Anna sent dozens of anxious and critical messages with little response from Stephen. Eventually, he would be warm again, even flirtatious, but not consistently. Meanwhile, Stephen's fans were putting the pieces together. From Anna's stream chat, they asked if she'd slept with Stephen during the trip. She giggled and said they shouldn't ask that, which many took as confirmation of their suspicions. Not receiving the promised attention from Stephen, Anna sent him Psychology Today articles about stonewalling and narcissism. She, <laughs> okay. she also criticised what she perceived as a sociopathic vindictiveness, in part because of a story he told her and others about how he once lied to get his ex's boss to get her fired from a job. On one of her own streams, she criticized Stephen for moving across the country from his son. When I spoke to her, she told me she'd innocently mentioned some psychology research about how sons should spend time with their fathers, but the clip was not how she described it at all. In reality, while reading a chat message saying Stephen was a good father, Anna burst into a mocking laughter before saying, yeah, because we all know to be a good father. The best thing to do is to move a million miles away from your son. I'm gonna stop before someone clips that shit. Someone did clip it, and on October 5th, 2020, Stephen did his first Anna attack stream. I have some clips linked to me today. I don't normally torch bridges unless other people want to do it, in which case, fuck it. He played the clip of Anna calling him a bad father and launched into a play-by-play -play of their relationship, mostly complaining that she messaged him relentlessly after they had sex. One chatter asked, Destiny, why are you doing this? What, are you do what do you gain out of publicly ridiculing this girl? Stephen replied, I'm not trying to. The problem is she just keeps saying really fucking rude and disgusting shit about me on her stream. It's really fucking irritating. She doesn't realize how fucked in the head it is. He read aloud some of their DMs. 
He provided some screenshot. He also provided screenshots to his hungry fans and accused Anna of victim blaming Stephen for a past relationship in which he claims his ex was physically abusive. By the end of the stream, the chat had made hundreds of angry and critical comments about Anna. You literally slept with a psycho. Anna heard about the stream soon after it happened and messaged Stephen that night. Why would you do this? I'm freaking out. Shouldn't you be reported for outing my private sexual details? At 4.05 a.m., I'm just really so sad, Stephen. I trusted you to talk with me about how you were feeling about me. Also, I'm sorry for all the messages, but I've been freaking out and panicking for hours. The next night, I can't tell if this is you wanting some space or it's just you cutting off the friendship. Silence doesn't communicate anything. The following day, October 7th, Stephen agreed to talk to Anna again on stream. Before the conversation, Steve was, Stephen was nervous, laugh, laughing and fidgety. Stephen asked his friend Dan, do you think I should hash it all out on stream? Dan answered 100%. Dan Saltman is a family man and a recurring character on the stream. I feel like there's a non-zero chance that this person would actually kill themselves. That's the only reason why I feel like it's probably not a good idea, Stephen said. Dan pressed him. You have to, though. It's not going to end, and it's just fucking cringe for everyone else. Well, I feel like at this point, I'm literally capitalizing on somebody else's mental illness for my profit. <laughs> Am I fucked in the head? Am I fucked in the head? I just, I don't know. I just look at that and I just laugh. I think my, I think I'm fucked in the head. <laughs> By the way, listen, guys, I know you're sending me a lot of super chats. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We're going to continue on. Okay. We're going to continue on. <clears throat> and with that, Stephen asked Anna to the stream. Stephen repeated his complaints about Anna's endless critical messages about her psychology, and they argued about whether Anna had the right to publicly call Stephen's sexual relationships abusive, with Stephen saying, you're not allowed to express concern with any of my personal relationships that I don't want your opinion on. Stephen also defended his tendency to retaliate against others. When you say you've left a trail of destruction behind you, the implication there is generally that I'm traumatizing or abusing or hurting people that otherwise don't deserve it. Anna, nobody deserves that. How could you say that? Stephen, because sometimes people do real dickish things and I think if you do dickish things back, it's not the worst thing in the world. Anna, that doesn't give you the right to do anything back at them. That gives you no right to retaliate. Stephen, yeah, we're not talking about who's right, first of all. I have the right to do anything I want, okay? Fuck that. Anna, no, you don't see right there entitlement. Stephen, that's not entitlement. Wait, what do you mean? As long as I'm not hurting anybody else, I have a right to talk about or do anything I want. Anna, okay, well, you just said you have a right to do whatever you want. Stephen, wait, I stopped saying the names. Wait, what did you think I meant by that, Anna? Did you think I meant I should be able to shoot somebody or punch somebody or choke somebody? Do you really think that's what I meant with that? Is that the read we're going with here? Because Anna felt obligated to keep Stephen's secret about getting his ex fired from a job, his fans were clueless about the context of this argument. Another creator... Wait, what? Linus Tech Tips? By the way, when I get to the end of this segment, we'll just take a quick few-minute break. I've got some DMs I just need to respond to, and uh, we're going we're gonna to see, see about the plans. We're going to see about the plans. I'll put it that way, okay? Anyway, another creator, Linus Tech Tips, jumped in with a lukewarm defense of Destiny's vindictiveness. Linus, wait, Anna, are there varying degrees of abuse? People are saying it's not Linus Tech Tips. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the wrong Linus. Oh, it's someone else. Oh, he's got the wrong person. He thinks it's Linus Tech Tips, but it's not. It's someone else. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That is, that is uh, you know. Anyway, listen, I don't want to focus too much on that because people will just say, why are you focusing on that little detail when he's literally mind raping Anna on his stream? Anyway, let's continue. 
Wait, Anna, are there varying degrees of abuse? Like, is there a greater and lesser form of abuse? Anna, the, yeah, the whole article is debunked. The entire article is now debunked. Anna, Linus, you cannot. You seem like a really nice person. You cannot seriously. Oh, my God. Linus, I haven't said anything. I'm just asking you. Anna, sure, yes. Linus, so it could be that. Maybe when Destiny is retaliating, it's a little bit abusive, right? It's a little bit abusive, but is it? It's still abuse. Yes, it's still abusive. But maybe in the context of Destiny being a streamer and Destiny being an entertainer and these public conflicts and Destiny's desire to drum up attention, these are things that a normal person doesn't interact with, right? You can't prescribe these things that you would talk about in a normal intimate relationship to someone as a wide public image, right? When Anna asked Stephen if he thinks he's harming people, he replied, yeah, probably, but if they're inflicting harm onto me, I don't really care that much. Anna, that's what concerns me. Stephen, oh my God, Linus. I think that most people are okay inflicting some amount of harm on others. Anna, uh, what? Linus, it's extremely difficult for me to ever... To, it's extremely difficult for me to not ever be mean ever, right? Like I'm going to be mean at some point in time and it's okay to point out, point out and say, hey, you shouldn't be mean. But it's different to say I've left a trail of victims because I've been mean to people sometimes, Anna. But I think what you're talking about is people making normal mistakes and stuff, but I'm talking about an observable pattern of behavior. I don't know that you could call it an observable pattern of behavior out in the clinical sense. My main observation here is that Stephen has behaviors that probably cause you a lot of anxiety and your anxiety causes Stephen to feel a lot of stress. Linus said that Anna doesn't have enough information about Stephen's relationships to call this behavior abusive and that without reaching out to other people affected, which would be inappropriate, she can't comment on it. Stephen capped off the defensive triple team by saying, you're making yourself the victim, I'm the victim here, and later adding, if you want to bring any friend into here and you want to let me explain what's happened, I guarantee you they will never ever side with you. Dan tried to convince Anna to leave Stephen alone, saying, I think both of you understand that moving forward there shouldn't be any additional relationship, friends or not. Oh, Dan, on the money as always. Just nothing. No conversation, no nothing, knowing you're incompatible, there's no future, there's no hope. Dan is just correct about stuff. It really is as simple as that, okay? It really is as simple as that. If only, if only Destiny had listened. Anyway, let's continue. But moments later, Stephen offered to fly out to argue directly with Anna's therapist. Near the end of the conversation, Stephen explained why he was attacking her. I have to protect myself. I can't have a person that is saying incredibly nasty things about me to other people on this platform. I have to come out and give my side of the story. Otherwise, I'll look like this horrible abuser behind the scenes. Of course I have to. It's protecting myself. After the stream, Anna continued to message Stephen about her problems with him. He was mostly unresponsive until Anna presented an opportunity for content. A graduate psychology student had reached out because he was concerned about how Stephen had treated Anna and he was willing to talk with Stephen. On October, October 30th, 2020, the student named Drew moderated an on-stream conversation between Stephen and Anna. Drew quickly abandoned his goal of mutual understanding and instead focused on brokering a peace treaty where the two would agree to stop talking about each other in public and have no private contact whatsoever. Destiny agreed, but he was sceptical about the plan. To be clear, after we had this conversation last time, she was talking about me on a stream the next day. I can make it so that in my community, people don't talk about her, link her tweets, do any of that shit anymore, yeah. However, he then repeated his offer to fly out and do a group therapy session with Anna and a therapist. Drew implored Anna to seek closure on her own rather than by continuing to talk to Stephen. Frustrated, Stephen said, she's walking away from this thinking that I'm the person with the most of the problems. Drew asked if that mattered. None of this technically matters to me. I have nothing to lose here if my community harasses her forever. In that sense, the prerogative shouldn't be on me to resolve this. It should be on her. I mean, I'm willing to because I don't want to be a cruel, evil person. In a rare moment of semi vulnerability, Stephen said that Anna had made an ableist attack against him by calling him a sociopath. <laughs> okay we're getting through this guys the talk ended with both parties agreeing to the unconvincing ceasefire and Stephen announced that all discussion of Anna was now banned in his community in November Anna sent Stephen several hundred pages worth of unanswered DMs 
Oh, sorry, several pages worth. My mistake. Several pages worth of unanswered DMs. She shared her ruminations about feeling humiliated, guilty, and angry and pleaded for him to respond. <clears throat> on November 22nd, 2020, while Stephen played Minecraft on stream, Dan read the following open letter to Anna, prefacing it with, this was a joke, meaning I did not intend for this to be sent. Listen here, you crazy fucking bitch. Stephen doesn't want to be with you. He doesn't want to talk to you. He doesn't want to receive your constant desperate Discord messages. In fact, every time we receive one from you, we laugh and laugh about how sad and pathetic you are. Our favorites are the ones where you write paragraphs and paragraphs and we just imagine you desperately waiting by the computer for a response that will never come. Stephen laughed and said, Dan, what the fuck is wrong with you? Dan continued, I'm not sure how delusional you are to believe that there will ever be a world where Stephen wants to talk to you again, but I wanted to thank you for the incessant entertainment you provide with your incoherent ramblings and pseudo-nonsense psychological takes. Let me be as clear as possible so that you get the hint, because it seems to me you're incapable of listening. You mean nothing to either of us. We could give two shits if you never contacted either of us again. Our feelings about you are similar to that of a newspaper comic. A funny thing to look at once in a while. After a pause, and, after a pause Stephen said, wow, edgy much. Three days later, on November 25th, 2020, Steve really fin Stephen finally responded to Anna De Anna's ongoing DM saying, Anna, I don't think we're going to resolve this one. Three weeks later, they were sexting again. Three weeks later. Listen, I've already made my position on the sexting thing very clear numerous times. I don't want to fucking have to labor the point at this stage, okay? I don't want to have to labor the point at this stage. I think we've gone through it enough. But I mean, you know, no one is going to convince me that, you know, it was totally fucking kosher that Destiny was sexting Anna. You're never going to convince me of that. It's impossible, okay? It's literally fucking impossible. However, you know, that being said, I think the way this is framed as, uh, you know, originally the Harvey Weinstein situation is fucking insane to me. But anyway, very messy, very difficult situation. Um, you know, wait, what? <laughs> oh. I ran out of memory. <laughs> Harvey's situation was messy as well. Well, yeah, I mean, Harvey Weinstein was convicted of literal rape. So, I mean, I don't know if you know. Okay, sorry, I've lost it, obviously. I need to go back down to where it was. <coughs> anyway. Sorry, my bad. Three weeks later, they were sexting again. On January 25th, 2021, Anna told Destiny that she'd seen an old clip of him. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do, right? I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let me get to a break. I'm going to increase these fucking bars, okay? We're going for a fucking 2K stream today, okay? We're going for $2,000. I'm Listen... I'm going to double check and make sure the plans, I can maybe put them off till tomorrow or something, okay? If that's the case, I'm going to keep streaming. I'm going to keep reading. And I'm going to see if we can do a $2,000 stream. And then if we're at $2,000, I'm going to see if I'm going to do a $4,000 stream. And then if we're at $4,000, I'm going to see if I'm going to do a $6,000 stream, okay? We're going to fucking rank it up. That's what we're going to do today. I am shamelessly begging for your money. I need your money. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Let's continue. <clears throat> on January 25th, 2021, Anna told Destiny that she'd seen an old clip of him talking about choking his ex-wife. In the clip, Destiny had said, I had to fucking choke her out a few fucking times. That shit got crazy. Hell yeah, it did. And I guarantee you that everybody here would probably think I'm a fucking crazy physical abuser too. Wait, that's the fucking, that's, the, what's that guy's name? That fucking cretin that's now snaking about a Mr. Girl's community. Claw, Claw shared that clip. Do you remember? Claw shared that, do you remember? I've seen him in Mr. Girl's community shit talking me, fucking loser. Anyway, let's continue. 
This was in the context of defending Mr. Deadmoth, a streamer who, in 2018, hit his pregnant wife multiple times on stream after she threw small objects at him. Destiny did a reaction stream where he rationalised the violence against her, calling her an abuser and dismissing her chilling screams as crocodile tears. In the stream chat, you can watch the mostly male audience turn against her with ironic jokes. One punch man... Okay, I don't even know if I can say that on fucking YouTube. <laughs> Jesus. And the sincere identification of Mr. Deadmoth and the, as the victim. It sounds like she did this to actually ruin his stream career the way she said, you're a woman beater out loud. Look, I've got to be honest with you. I remember that video and I do think it's a situation. I mean, again, you know, obviously when it comes to beating women, obviously there's a... Uh... <laughs> no, stop. I'm going to stop poisoning the well, okay? No more poisoning the well, okay? Anyway, listen... There's two sides to every story, okay? Let's put it that way. Right, let's continue on. Anna, choking out is like the number one red flag for domestic abuse victims to get out and you dare call yourself a victim. You could have killed her. You were never a victim and you should have gone to jail for that. Destiny, my ex and I fought all the time. It was always in self-defense. I had to call the police on her three times to get her to stop attacking me. You were so unbelievably out of line in this message. It makes me sad to think you're going to have patience in the real world. You should be ashamed of this message. Anna, we literally screen victims by asking if their partners ever choke them out because it indicates the partner is extremely dangerous. This is attempted murder. No therapist, oh, hey, dear media. No therapist in the right mind would condone what you fucking did. Destiny, what am I supposed to do if someone has me trapped in a room and is fucking attacking me? Anna, I mean, restraining wasn't an option. Destiny, she weighed like 50 pounds more than me. Are you fucking serious? I was 500, I was 105 and she was like 160. You make far too many assumptions and judge far too quickly for someone in your position. Both partners have some responsibility. Research shows that violent relationships, both partners do things that escalate the violence instead of de-escalating it. And all I see from you are behaviors that are aggressive and escalate and you think they're self-defense. I've lived long enough and experienced enough to know this to be true. And you can refer back to this message in five years if you're wondering what's going wrong. You have some insanely antisocial techniques that inhibit your, you, you from being able to communicate with or understand other human beings. You do not understand how people think or feel and consequently say unimaginably clueless or horrible things to them. Good luck with everything. You need a ton of it if you're going to make changes necessary to, to even be a somewhat competent communicator, let alone a therapist. He blocked her. Then he posted screenshots of the DMs in his public chat, calling her insane. Melina replied, can we all just try and get her fired? She'll kill people with her words. I hate her with all my heart. Jesus. I found reposted the DMs in Destiny's subreddit with the title, This is Disgusting. The post received 1,400 upvotes and the top comment with 859 upvotes reads, it's extremely common for abusers to attempt to discount and minimize the victim's past abuse. Anna is an abuser. She is abusive. On February 12, 2023, Destiny wrote the following comment in my subreddit on a thread about the alleged choking. Just as an FYI, I've never choked anyone to or near the point of unconsciousness in my life. I've never even really choked someone. It was more just holding them from behind to get them to stop hitting me. Blocked on Discord, Anna messaged Destiny consistently on Instagram for a month with sp sporadic replies from Destiny, such as, I think we just trigger each other too much, Anna, lol. And Anna, no contact, please. Oh. Okay, let's continue on. Let's continue on. <laughs> let's continue on. <laughs> Look, okay. I'm trying to just read. The DMs kept coming. On March 16th, Destiny apologized to her for attacking her publicly, but six days later, he said on stream the apology had been insincere. Eventually, he blocked Anna on Instagram. She started DMing him on Twitter, at one point asking, Seriously, do you wish I were dead? Would you fucking meme my suicide for content? By summer, Destiny was sexting her again. Good God, man. All of the people, every single person that was fucking, you know, saying, oh, Chud, it's two consenting adults. What are you wor worrying about? Like, come on, man. You cannot, you are not, you cannot fucking say that, like, the sex thing is, like, A-OK. -okay. You can't say to me, like, yeah, that's totally fine. If someone came to you with a situation and was like, hey, this is what's happening, right? Okay. 
There's no way you're going to say to me, you would say to them, yeah, you should probably sex them. That's a good idea. That's absolutely rock solid. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Come on, let's continue on. In June, Anna asked Destiny to help her reputation. Destiny, if I said anything now, people would just be really dramatic and dumb about stuff. Aren't you all concerned with Melina finding out? Not so much what your fan base thinks, but also it's not like I'm some crazy person, Lamau. You could just say you exaggerated. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it, okay, lol? And maybe in the future, yeah, yeah, tease me and make me tweet it out sometime. Oh, true. Now you're giving me ideas. Lots of ideas. <laughs> Destiny is like just... I just... I just don't know what to say at this point, man. I just don't know what to tell you. Anyway, let's just read through these. Come on. Oh, my fucking God. Let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> let's continue. I'll fix it sometime publicly, okay? Until then, you can work on your essays on your bed while I rub your legs and feet, okay? Okay. One question. One question. Does this article give any information about Destiny's alleged foot fetishes? That's the thing that I need to know. Alleged, I don't look. I'm not, listen, I, look, I'm, all I'm going to say, all I'm going to say is, okay, I've seen some things, okay? Let's put it that way. Anyway, enough of that. Let's continue on, all right? Okay. <clears throat> on January 1st, 2021, Destiny and Anna appeared on a panel about mental health and policing together. On July 17th, Anna reiterated a request that they not keep their friendliness a secret. Destiny, I'm more comfortable keeping things under wraps, but if you're not comfortable with that, then it's your choice whether you want to continue chatting with me. Do you? But do you understand why that's shitty for me? Sure, I can understand why you'd feel that way, but it doesn't change my position. On August 29th, 2021, Destiny complained on stream that Anna was privately telling people he's a dark triad abuser. When Dan expressed dismay that Destiny was still in contact with Anna, Wait, well, okay, listen, I'm, I can't, listen, I've got to read through this. Stop adding me in chat with, with allegations most foul that I'm into feet shit, okay? No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm not into any sexual thing. I'm not a sexual entity. Let's just continue. When Dan expressed dismay that Destiny was in contact with Anna, Destiny said that the only way to prevent Anna from going on constant hate tirades about him is to try to be somewhat friendly with her. He had to sex her. It was the only way, guys. It was the only way. It was the only option left. He tried everything else. It was the only option left. Anyway, come on. That's not what this is saying, but that was obviously a narrative that came out. Let's just continue. Dan said, oh, so you're giving into blackmail, to be clear. Someone's giving you shit, and you're like, okay, fuck it. I can't fight it anymore. You win. We're best friends. You're meant to. We're meant to be together forever. The same day... Destiny DM'd Anna, do you understand that it's really bad that you're making new friends that are already my friend and then venting to them about me? The following, yeah, Dan is correct. The biggest thing from all of this is the evidence. The most thing that is most evidence here is that Destiny needs to listen to Dan far more often. <clears throat> Destiny read aloud the following statement in a sarcastic monotone. I'm making a public announcement. Anybody that doesn't understand this is getting permanently banned and we're putting all this behind us, okay? Listen, me and Anna are perfectly fine. She's not a crazy person. She's not a stalker. We have had fights publicly where there's been name calling on both sides, but you know what? Everything is cool and we're past all of that. The chat reacted with comments like, blink twice if she has a gun to your head and she has something on him. On September 22nd, 2021, during a 12-person panel show hosted by John Zerker, Anna tearfully accused Destiny of emotionally abusing her. The other panelists mostly urged her to calm down and let it go. Okay, that's something I do kind of note. I thought that John Zerka was like trying to egg that on, wasn't he? I thought that was like an incident where John was trying to like egg the drama or something. He was farming it, wasn't he? Anyway. 
Like, it's all very well saying the other panelists mostly urge you to calm down. But if John Zerker is there egging the drama on and he's hosting the panel, like, obviously, you're going to lean towards that, aren't you? Anyway. Eventually, Destiny called him to defend himself. Sounding tired but panicked, he was calling from bed. Destiny accused Anna of consistently breaking their agreements to stop talking about each other. He then set about discrediting her, explaining how he'd blocked her on Discord and she'd followed him to other platforms. Anna's rage at the stalker narrative boiled over. Wait, I'm being told... You know, my thing went down a second ago. I'm being told that he changed the Linus Tech Tips thing. Is that true? I can't be bothered to go and check. Otherwise, I'll have to find my place again. Okay, fuck me. Right, let me get to the end of this arc that I do need to take just five minutes to just respond to some DMs and fucking just figure out what's going on tonight, okay? Because uh, let's just continue. Anna's rage at the stalker narrative bored over. Shouting, she said, Good night, princess. Good morning, princess. Really? I'm misrepresenting the relationship. Remember all the things you told me about Melina? I've been fucking protecting you. I've been protecting you. I've been protecting you from lying to Melina. How fucking dare you? If you're going to do this shit, then I'm leaking it all. I'm not protecting your lying ass anymore. Zerka jokingly asked, Destiny, do you feel protected? But then he added, no, Anna. Anna, you're not leaking DMs. Destiny offered a sarcastic, exacerbated apology. I'm a horrible person. I accept full responsibility. I've lied to my fiancé. I've lied to my son. I've lied to my community. I'm a horrible, manipulative person. Every part of this is my fault, and now I'm moving on, and I never want to talk about this publicly again. Zerka backed him up again. Yeah, that's great. It's closure time, Anna. Destiny pledged to stop all public and private communication with Anna and left the call. Anna continued to criticise him. 70 minutes later, Destiny returned, begging Zerka to cut Anna off. Zerka refused, and Destiny and Anna argued about the relationship for another hour. Near the end, Anna asked, If you don't want to be friends with me, why didn't you tell me in privately? Why didn't you just say that? Anna, when someone... He blocks you on two different platforms and doesn't respond to any messages. What do you think that means? Anna responded, that's the silent treatment. Though, if you didn't want to be friends with me, why didn't you say that? Oh my God. Okay, Destiny said and quickly left. The following day, Destiny did a follow-up stream to explain his thoughts about Anna. I feel a little bit better though, because now that it blew up on Zerka's show, I have so many people messaging me that seem to understand how unhinged she is. I'm not worried anymore now. So everybody that thought I was being held hostage, you were right. My thought processes before was that maybe if we can just be friends and chill, everything will be okay and she'll stop talking about me publicly. The scary thing is that she started to get into some of these communities where I had a whole bunch of mutual friends. So for instance, a whole bunch of people started DMing me that were like, hey, do you know this Anna person? I got really scared because then it seems like another Bob Seven situation where it's like, is she about to go and tell every single person that I'm this abusive, horrible person? But now that everything just came out on Zerka's show, I think I'm okay with everything now. Now I can just ignore her. She can spam her shit all day. I don't care because I think enough people have seen her now in that arena blow up where they're like, okay, she's got problems. A chatter suggested he had have her blacklisted from panel shows. Do you understand how weird that looks if like small girl streamer complains that Destiny manipulated her. Now Destiny is contacting other show hosts telling them not to let her on. You understand how horrible that looks, right? A month later, he would do this exact thing. The reason why the situation is probably more difficult than anything that I've handled in the past is because most people have a sense of shame or reputation or job or relationships or anything. That's some, there's some fucking art of war Sun Tzu fucking quote about this, but the problem is that Anna has nothing to lose. She can go as hard as she wants, as long as she wants, as much as she wants, and she has, there's no repercussions. The next day, Stardust, a Destiny ally who had brushed off Anna's abuse claims on the Zerka panel, did a stream with Drew, a refreshingly sane psychology student who'd advocated for Anna a year prior. Drew told Stardust he was concerned that the increased intention on Anna would bring more harassment her way after the Zerka hosted stream screaming match. It was inevitable the drama vultures would come for their pieces of the Anna pie and they'd be encouraged to help themselves so long as they were promulgating Destiny's narrative. Within 22 minutes, Dan joined the call. I thought I'd come here to defend the honor of my friend a little bit. I kind of see a victim and an aggressor. I guess you see it in the other way, but I don't really particularly give a shit what the aggressor goes through when they do stuff. I care about the victim personally. 
Drew hold fast to his original point. He doesn't want to see Anna harassed. Dan said, actions have consequences to a certain extent, like when someone does something bad or stupid and you call someone an abuser in front of everyone else because they stop talking to you. Wait, my chat's gone. Not that I'm really engaging with it. How you doing, guys? You good? <clears throat> and you calling someone an abuser in front of everyone else because they stop talking to you, when that happens, bad things kind of come back to you. He added... I didn't say anything for a long time because Steve asked me to, but it kept coming up and it's like, do we just sit here and get fucked over forever with no response? By this time, the shitting on Anna economy was officially booming. If you search Anna and Destiny, YouTube will happily take you to an algorithm guided tour of mocking streams, reaction videos, montages and video essays. There are entire channels dedicated, devoted to attacking her. On September 27th, 2021, Destiny gave Anna an update on stream, calling her the most abusive, manipulative motherfucker in the world. Anna started tweeting again because she's always tweeting. She's getting shit on Twitter a lot, which I guess is good. I hate to say that, but I don't know how to make her stop. Strategizing, he ruled out asking Twitch for help and shot down the idea of getting a restraining order. I've thought about lifting the gag rule on my subreddit. I don't know. I'll probably keep it because we need to stop talking about her. But I also need people to know that she's fucking insane, so I don't know what to do. He declared that Zerka would not be allowed to react to his streams anymore, or he'd file copyright claims against him, threatening his channel. Destiny read aloud a DM he received from a longtime Twitter foe known as Squirrel. You need to... Oh yeah, the Squirrel got involved. The squirrel got involved. You need to stop talking to or about Anna going forward and remove any mentions of her from your community. The constant back and forth between you is incredibly unhealthy for her and there's no possibility of resolution going down that route. I'm sorry, but the lifestyle you've chosen is one where this stuff is liable to happen and there is no way you can stop it by offering money or blocking or whatever. You just have to deal with it and accept that whatever she does... Which, by the way, in the grand scheme of things, is incredibly marginal. What? She talks about you on some shows, who cares? Is the cost that you have to pay for that? And his reply, You have zero idea what you're talking about. Fuck out of my personal life. You're a deranged Lamau. The exchange was posted on Destiny's subreddit with the title, Squirrel Girl Returns. Think she's entitled to comment on Destiny's personal life. It has 997 upvotes. Wait, why are people fucking adding me in my Discord? Oh, apparently, okay, listen, I need to focus on this. Um, okay, sorry, oh, you've got to understand, this is a bit tricky to navigate all the shit that's going on. Okay, here we go. Destiny continued, can you imagine if I was a woman being stalked by a guy and someone DM'd me that? Do you understand the level of fucking insanity that is? And now the squirrel cunt has tweeted this whole fucking manifesto about how I bring on young girls and groom them and shit on my stream. He also attacked a streamer named Maddie Cakes after saying they had squashed their beef in private, call he'd illegally recorded. Five days later, she's in somebody else's fucking chat saying, oh, Destiny the Friends misogynists. Okay, fuck Maddie Cakes, fuck her, fuck everything about her online. Okay, fuck this piece of shit. Jesus Christ, what a fucking loser, holy shit. On September 28th, 2021, a Destiny, def Destiny defender named Irrelevant, debated Zerka about who'd exploited Animor between Destiny and Zerka. Okay, I'm just gonna... So, this is this is just documenting what happened from an Anna favorable perspective, right? That's that's the way I'd frame this, okay? In, a, in the softest way I can think of. Now, that's fine if you want to do that. My thing with this is generally what conclusion am I supposed to draw? And maybe we'll come to that at the end, right? But I'm reading through this and I'm like, yeah, I've made my case about what I think about the anisexting stuff. Um, but it's like, beyond that, what are you supposed to do or what are you supposed to say? Like, what what is the point of this? Because I thought originally the article was about all of these women coming forward and he had like all these witnesses that were going to come and say all this shit about Destiny and shit on him and stuff like that. Okay. But it's like, it seems like it's just, oh, here's a bunch of stuff, some of which you know happened, framed more favorably towards Anna. And, uh, you know, also there was sexting throughout this as well. 
Do you see what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm like, okay. So yeah, I agree with the, the sex and criticism, but like, I thought this was about revealing some sort of new information. You know, you haven't disagreed. Well, okay. Obviously, if I, okay. What I agree with the fundamental principle about the, the sexting out of thing was fucking retarded. Okay, right? I've agreed. I agree with that part of it. But like, I know some of this stuff. I didn't look into all the drama to this much detail, but I just don't understand. Like, you're saying I don't agree with it. Yeah, I'm trying to read through the article. I'm not going to go line by line and go, well, actually, in this particular drama, this is what happened. Da, 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 da. Like, I'm going to be here for hours. I'm trying to find a balance between reading it, reacting and stuff like that. Some of this stuff I don't really know about to comment on without looking into it in more details, right? So do you see the point I'm trying to make? I thought the point was revealing someone who is a Harvey, a Harvey Weinstein-esque. And I'm just not seeing that. I'm just not seeing that myself. But we'll keep reading. We're going to obviously get to the end of this segment, okay? It's abusive. I mean... It just seems like a very messy, complicated situation that Destiny didn't help himself in by, you know... In engaging in certain types of behavior. Do you know what I mean? Some of the leaked logs are pretty new. I just don't know if this is something I categorize myself as abuse, but you know. Anyway, let's continue on. On September 28th, 2021, a Destiny defender named Irrelevant debated Zerka about who'd exploited Animor between Destiny and Zerka. Destiny jumped onto the call to attack Zerka for allowing Anna to shit talk him in front of 3,000 viewers. Another streamer, Haas, justified platforming her critiques of Destiny. Anna saw fit to vent her frustrations and problems, and one of the reasons she was doing that is because she's never actually had the opportunity to have a fucking large audience to talk that wasn't in the DGG cult. Destiny, um, after demanding that Haas be kicked from the call, countered that Zerka was farming a mentally ill girl for content and was probably scared of getting fucking banned because this girl might fucking kill herself after crying on your stream for four hours. On October 2nd, 2021, a Destiny ally named Aristocracy did a stream with Anna, who'd been a friend of hers. She cross-examined Anna for two hours with a barrage of questions like, do you think you have done some things to Destiny that could be seen as emotionally abusive? She told Anna that her emotional vomiting in Destiny's DMs was harassment and explained that Destiny was the real victim and that Anna was abuser. Well, Anna was the abuser. When you would reconnect, he would keep that a secret, right? He wouldn't tell people. He would still be acting on stream like you guys hadn't re reconnected and that really hurt you, okay? Totally get that. The thing is, it's also a totally normal behavior for an abuse victim to reconnect and engage with their abuser when they're in vulnerable moments. So who knows what he's going through and maybe he went back to that person and that person was you. That doesn't require some super evil malicious intent on your part, but that's a known unhealthy dynamic where someone keeps going back and they know that the people who care about them, I'm just guessing, I might be totally wrong with Destiny, but maybe he knew that his viewers who cared about him and his fiance that cares about him or anyone that they would immediately be like, dude, do not go back. That's an abusive situation and they're going to shit on him for it so he keeps that secret. It's a very normal behavior for a victim. Okay. <clears throat> After Anna left Aristocracy stream, Dan called in saying, if Destiny's guilty of anything, it's somehow getting back into a relationship with Anna when he should have fucking known that this was a bad idea. Dan, miss just once. Miss just once, Dan. Miss just fucking once. Unbelievable. Every fucking time Dan has said, Dan has said something, it's just been correct. <clears throat> But I can't fault him too much because he was probably thinking, okay, this is the best way to make this end if she's somewhat happy. Aristocracy replied, I don't think she left him with any choice. Alicia, another streamer friend of Destiny, said in a reaction stream, it's not a relationship. You were just a hit it and quit it and you're too fucking crazy to handle that. You're too fucking cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs to understand that you were just a vagina for a day. Get over it, move on. Jesus. On October 2nd, 2021, Stardust debated Zerka about the claim that Destiny pumps and dumps women. Stardust said it was unfair to imply that Destiny doesn't care about his sex partners. 
On October 8th, 2021, Abra and Preach, a man-focused commentary channel with 1.9 million subs, posted a video titled, Why Would You Call Me Princess? How Crazy Women Hold Men Hostage. The video is monetized and has a million views. Abba unlisted it at Destiny's request a year later, around the time I announced I was writing this article. On October 26, 2021, Destiny blacklisted Anna from panel shows, stating, If any of the political panel shows or people affiliating with Anna in any way, I'm not going on the show for six months. He read aloud a chat message that said, I think you might be able to report her to the school for ethics violations. She's psychoanalyzing people publicly. On October 1st, 2021, Destiny posted in his offline chat, tell Anna if she leaks my sexting, I might have some pics to share. Anna took this as a threat to leak her nudes and would later refer to it as sexual abuse. On October 12th, 2021, Anna accused Destiny of pressuring her to not use a condom when they had sex in 2020. He denied this and she later admitted it was not true and that she'd said it out of anger. On, September, on December 26th, 2021, Destiny read the winners of his Community Year Awards. Panel Shitshire of the Year, Zerka Royal with Anna. Antagonist of the Year, Anna. Ally of the Year, Aristocracy. Neurodivergent of the Year, Mental Health Awareness Award, Anna. Drama of the Year, Bob Seven. Anna came in second place. Re of the Year, Anna. Why would you call me Princess? Re symbolizes baseless whining or screeching. It's actually autistic screeching it's supposed to be, but another error in the article. On January 5th, 2022, Destiny played video games on stream while listening to Anna rant about him on her own stream, making occasional comments like she's lying and nice. I mean, I think you basically summed up all of Destiny's gaming streams in, uh, in that one comment, to be honest. On 23rd of January, 2022, Dan asked Destiny how things were going with Anna. Destiny said, it's the same as always. She's looping infinitely. There's nothing else to really say. Dan, you think there's no way out of it for you, yeah? Destiny. Not until she kills herself or kills she kills me. Dan, all righty, okay, well, a little dark all of a sudden. Destiny, what else can happen? Destiny reads aloud an email from a therapist who explains how they'd use DBT therapy to treat Anna's needs to be a victim. He seemingly later attempted to give her this therapy himself on stream. The same day, Destiny invited Anna to talk to him. The stream was titled Confronting Anna About Her Lies and Never-Ending Loops. Destiny, you're actually insane. How can you not realize this? Anna, you're driving me crazy, Stephen. How can you not realize this? Anna said she was upset. He still calls her a stalker. Destiny told her to drop it. Destiny, if you ever, if every time you bring it up on stream, then I respond to it and then it happens over and over again. Why not just leave it? Destiny said she was having a psychotic break and that she wasn't really trying to let it go. Anna, I'm just hoping that people will slowly not think I'm a stalker. I don't know. Destiny, it's not going to end on your terms and accused her of faking breakdowns. You're like giddy right now to have this conversation, but simultaneously you say I've made you suicidal. How does that work? Anna, I think you know that it's my defense mechanism. Yeah, it's called borderline personality disorder. I think that's what's going on. They argued about whether she meets the criteria for borderline personality disorder. Anna said she has OCD and can't stop herself from re-engaging. Destiny, I've never in my life interacted with somebody that has the fortitude that you do to carry it forward in a negative way that is so self-destructive. You're steadfast in your engagement with your own self-destruction. Why are you posting a Bible verse? Anna, because I can't let people think lies about me. I can't let it go. We're here, by the way. We're here. We're here. Destiny asked Anna what works on what she works on in therapy. She said she works on her OCD. He then asked if she uses DBT. It's effective for people with borderline. They both laughed. Destiny then read the criteria for borderline personality disorder and tried to convince her that she has it. You said you were feeling suicidal. I think that matches under self-harm. Some days I do feel suicidal because of the harassment and stuff. And I feel like, wow, this is kind of hopeless. Holy shit. It's never going to get better. You've been talking about me for over a year and a half. Oh, well, haven't you been doing the same thing? They made another agreement to not talk about each other. Destiny said he won't, she won't make it 12 hours. Oh, my God. This is a fucking slog, isn't it? Jesus. Um, <clears throat> I'm on YouTube because I wanted to do some YouTube streams, basically. I think you convince yourself that because of the type of abuse I've subjected you to, I think that you could try to kill me in real life and I think you would feel justified doing it. 
Do you think you have a good reason, enough reason on everything that I've done to you? Do you think you have good enough reason to try to kill me? Fuck no, dude. That's fucking insane. Destiny, don't you think if he did kill me, you would still be the victim in the situation? By the way, subscribe to me. Hit the subscribe button. That's free. You can subscribe for free. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. I do loads of great videos and you'll love it. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. Um, that's insane, dude. What the fuck? Anna claim that Destiny wants to hurt her. If I wanted to cause you the maximum amount of pain and suffering, don't you think there's a million other things that somebody like me could do? I'm a pretty resourceful person. The only reason you wouldn't do it is because of how it would impact you, not because it's morally wrong. Why do you think it would impact me? I don't know. Get you banned or something. I can get around things. I'm sponsored by Surfshark.deal slash Destiny. There's a VPN that I could get where I have three months for free, 80% discount. I could log in for, to an IP anywhere in the world. Destiny opened up a website about psychosis and argued that she is psychotic and delusional. Anna explained that her thinking is not distorted to the point where it could be called a break from reality. He asked if she's medicated. She said she isn't. He spent several minutes trying to persuade her to go on antipsychotics or antidepressants. Anna accused Destiny of trying to make people think she's crazy and he acknowledged that it was true. Yeah, I don't want anybody listening to you and I want people to think you're crazy because you lie about me constantly. He was referring to a lie about him pressuring her to use a condom as well as her evasiveness when confronted about why she'd recently promoted another streamer who hates Destiny. At the end of the conversation, Destiny said, I'll look forward to responding to your clips tomorrow when I see you freaking out again and reminded her of his ongoing offer to do a group session with, a, with her and a therapist. Afterward, a viewer commented in Destiny's subreddit, OK, I'm getting worried this is a sex thing and they're getting turned on by arguing in front of an audience and I'm not sure if I feel comfortable participating anymore. 59 upvotes. Wait! I know what this is. This was in my Discord. This happened in my Discord. This happened in my Discord, right? And it was basically what happened was I decided to look at this Anna stuff because I thought maybe it's interesting content, right? And I was looking at it on stream and I was offering some criticisms. Like I thought the Destiny like trying to diagnose Anna was fucking cringe as fuck. And I said that was bad. Um, I remember having to, I remember vaguely arguing with people about it in my chat because people were telling me, no, that actually it's the only way to stop this. Like it was fucking retarded. Anyway, I was, I was like, should I bring Anna on? Shouldn't I bring Anna on? I don't know what to do. Dan brought me on. Dan came on to try and to talk to me about it. Right. Anna never ended up coming on, but Anna was in my discord and was like fighting with all these people in my discord. It was fucking insane. Anyway. It was a very annoying stream, but nonetheless, I'm over it now. I just remember this this happening on my stream, or in my Discord. I remember Schizo went on Reddit about you. I mean, I've got to be honest with you, right? I think that I've had fairly reasonable takes on the Anna situation, even watching that stream. Um, yes, of course, Anna's done some crazy shit. That's undeniable. And there's definitely criticism that can be levied there. But the takes I've given are pretty measured, pretty reasonable. And, you know, reading through the timeline like this, I think, well, I don't really think I've said anything that's that out of fucking pocket, particularly when a lot of what I've said, even like, you know, um, I don't know, it just doesn't seem that, that crazy. The issue I've got, obviously, with the way this is framed is the way it's being characterized, right? It's the way it's all being sort of characterized and put together in this article. Um, even the way it's presented, I feel, is like a walk back, like I said earlier, from how it was presented initially. Anyway, I'll give my takes after I finish reading, okay? Let's continue on. The video is a recording of a Discord group call where several Destiny fans yell at and about Anna, often mimicking Destiny's arguments and even his speech patterns. Man one. A big claim right now is that people are accusing her of lying and she didn't. But the fact that she's here when she said she wasn't going to talk about this for two days is literally demonstrating that she's a liar. Man 2. Can you stop parroting whatever you heard Destiny say? True! Man 3. It's not just parroting what Destiny says. We're here watching it in real time. Last night she said she wasn't going to talk about it. Here she is talking about it. She's lying. I mean, in fairness, she was talking about it because I was talking about it on my stream. <laughs> but anyway, man four. Yes, toe the DGG line. Toe the line. Toe the line. Not a cult. Not a cult. Not a cult. Is that Queeman? I wonder who that was. Anna, why Why did these people join? Are you guys trying to get stalked by me or something? you got to line up and take a ticket if you want to get stalked. Anna, Anna, can I ask you a question? Oh, Dario. D Dario's in here as well. Anna, Anna, can I ask you a question? How do we figure out if somebody is lying? Do you know? 
Usually you have to have some sort of evidence of intent, I would think. How do you figure out evidence of intent? Have you ever watched a legal show or a trial or something where somebody's on trial where we're trying to establish intent, do you know? As he pressed her about how she's a liar, Destiny's young fans blurted out random memes. Oh my God. That is so cringe. I remember that happening, man. That was an insane day. Anyway, continuing on. January 24th, 2022. Aristocracy uploaded a video titled Anna Frills is starting to scare me. Aristocracy drew a diagram of Anna's friendships, alleging a sociopathic pattern of burning bridges and trying to ruin people's reputations amongst their friends. She watched a clip of Anna saying she won't forget the people who betrayed her and says that if Anna murders her, this clip will be used in the trial. January 25th, 2022. A Destiny Allied drama streamer named Sean Logic. Hey, the first reference. The first reference, guys. The first reference. The first reference. Up that's the that is the comp that is with the upload of the conversation I had with Dan that I was just referencing. Uploaded Dan joins call against Anna. Warns Chud against platforming her, featuring Wicked Supreme and Dylan Burns. Dan warns the other orbiters, if you guys don't call her out when she's saying shit on here, you guys are going to earn the fucking serious ire of destiny like times a thousand. He also said, I think she's actually the type of person who might try to kill you. Jesus. God, that takes me back. January 26, 2022. Dylan Burns TV uploaded Dylan, you're being abusive, confronting Anna Var about the Destiny drama featuring Destiny. Dylan confronted Anna about a condom claim, going as far as saying she may have been the one pressuring Destiny to use a condom, if anything. Dylan cross-examined her for 20 minutes before Destiny joined the call and took over the questioning. He asked Anna why they didn't use any condoms when they had sex. She shot back, why do you like being cucked? Jesus. Destiny laughed and feigned ignorance. How do I like being cucked? What? Do, do you want to go further? Anna asked, threatening to out the details of their sexting. As I mentioned before, Destiny may enjoy being threatened in this manner. I mean, including stuff like that is wild. I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> anyway, let's continue on. <laughs> Destiny urged Anna to stop talking about him in public, saying at this point, if you continue to engage with it, I'm just making money off you. I got 150,000 views on my last huge. I've got to say, right, all of this as well, because I remember it's like, oh, Destiny's like, my stuff with Anna was ages ago. It was years ago now. And it's like, I remember there was stuff happening in 2022 where it was still quite vicious, you know? Um, so, yeah, anyway. Let's continue on. Destiny urged Anna to stop talking about him in public, saying, at this point, if you continue to engage with it, I'm just making money off of you. I got 150,000 views on my last YouTube video. I'm profiting from your suffering, from your agony. Dylan said, legitimately, this would be a good reason for Destiny to just say, fuck it, I'm going to talk about it forever and just make money off of it, just make videos out of it. If I've got to deal with all these accusations, I might as well profit off of it. Anna explained that her streams are compulsive and she's unable to stop doing them. Dylan said she had a grim future ahead of her if she doesn't. Destiny said if she can go six months without talking about him, he will take down all of his videos about her and retract his statements about her being a stalker. February 6th, 2022, Destiny attempted what his fans called a therapy session with Anna. While playing video games, Destiny interviewed Anna methodically about her ruminations and coping strategies. I think usually the recommendations would be to remove yourself from those triggering environments, but I don't think you want to just completely give up and stop streaming because people are saying untrue things about you. That doesn't feel very satisfying, which is understandable. Have you thought about the ways to reduce the interaction that you have with people that might say untrue things about you? Anna accepted his attempt to help in spite of the fact that her main complaint is that Destiny has called her an insane stalker multiple times and has even offered to retract the claim in exchange for a silence. I don't want to too much into I don't want to do too much interpretation here.
But given the consistent back and forth between them, the on and off sexual nature of their relationship and the lack of any real stalking behaviours, I don't think there's any justification for calling her a stalker. Destiny explained to the audience that the experience of rumination is so foreign to normal people that they may be unable to comprehend the strength of the obsessive thoughts. Eating a sandwich, Destiny suggested that Anna try redirecting her attention when she's in a thought spiral rather than fighting it. He told her to form a support system that understands her OCD to make a plan to redirect herself when she ruminates and to talk to a therapist about how to break her rituals. Before leaving, Anna said, thank you for your input and understanding. I appreciate that. Speaking to chat, Destiny said, I did a lot of reading on OCD over the past few days. And I think I actually take back every single thing I said. I don't know if she's borderline or histrionic at all. I think that a lot of her behavior can actually be explained through OCD. And I think that if I treat it as such, and if she's aware of it, and if they're all aware of it, it might be easier for her to move on through everything. I think it's probably better than just assuming she's like an insane borderline person and blah, blah, blah. Within two weeks. <laughs> I mean, fuck it. Within two weeks, they were sexting again and continued to sext intermittently until at least November 2022. February 24th, 2022, I met Anna on an impromptu panel. She was wary of me and I of her. I didn't know anything that had happened, but had been told to my new, by my new fans that she was a stalker and that Destiny would be very upset if I platformed her. I uncharacteristically took this at face value, probably because I was enjoying my newfound fame and money. April 21st, 2022, Destiny invited me to mediate a stream conversation between him and Anna. By this point, I'd asked him about Anna and had accepted his explanation. They had a fling, she got obsessed with him, and then things simmered down. Having no real knowledge of their relationship, I was about to become complicit in her abuse by allowing Destiny to frame the conflict on his terms. Keep the money coming. Listen, I know that Destiny's gone live on kick. Keep the fucking money coming, okay? If you want, if you want to buy my fucking, you know, defense of Destiny here, you want to buy my white blood cell, the money needs to keep fucking flowing, all right? As long as the money keeps flowing, we're going to keep reading, and I'm going to keep defending Destiny, all right? I joined the stream and asked Anna what she wanted to communicate to Destiny, who was playing video games. Anna, I feel like he minimizes just how upsetting and stressful and painful this whole experience was for me. Get over it is sort of like the message. I asked how she was feeling. Anna, just depressed and hopeless. And why do I even bother studying psychology? Anyway, she said the damage to her reputation made her want to drop out of school and disappear from the internet. I pointed out that Destiny has steeled himself against online harassment, so he's unlikely to acknowledge how this is affecting her. He once told me, that if he let the hate get to him, he would have killed himself a long time ago. Destiny argued that while the original blowout was traumatic for Anna, from that point on, the trauma has to be self-inflicted. The only person that can stop it at this point is her, so I don't know what I can do. In my infinite charity for Destiny, I said, you have so much more power than her in this situation that even if you're trying to make a conscious effort to repair it and protect it from yourself and your community, you still almost really can't. He replied, sure, but then what do I do? Because I'm the one that gets attacked, right? Surprised at his willingness to acknowledge the power differential, I point out that if you say about her is amplified by 10 million compared to what she says about you. That's why I don't say negative things about her. Taken further aback, I said, even if you're just implying, you're implying negative things about her right now in this conversation. The meditation started to seem impossible the mediation, sorry, my bad, started to seem impossible because Destiny wouldn't actually take a position. Me, why do you care what she says? Destiny, technically, I guess I don't because I can just do this. But for her sake, it's probably not healthy, right? Me, I hate when people call me an abuser. It doesn't affect you. Destiny, everybody calls me an abuser. I don't care at this point. Me, Mr. Girl, obviously. Doesn't that make it worse? Destiny, no, it is what it is. I don't care. Me. Okay, so you're saying that you request for her to stop calling you an abuser or stop relitigating this. I think it's bad for her mental health. A few minutes later, I paraphrased his position. I'm telling this person to stop saying bad stuff about me only for her own good. I'm a saint and I just want what's best for you. And what's best for you is to keep my name out of your fucking mouth, you lying bitch. After a pause, Destiny asked his chat, Where did I go to get that dragon stone?
Is that about the game? Is that about the game he was playing? That's got to be about the game he was playing at the time, right? I think the point, okay, the point of including this from Mr. Girl's perspective is, you know, he's trying to give his position on what's going on and he's trying to get in there and talk to him about it. And Destiny is so disinterested, uh, you know, that he's more interested in finding out about his game than having the conversation, right? That's the point that Max is trying to make. El is Elden Ring? Anyway, I've got to be honest with you. I mean, with the bloat of this article, maybe some of that could have been cut out. But anyway, might have been a D and D. Okay. Anyway, giving up on reaching him, I left him with this: You're both each other's worst nightmare. Destiny's worst nightmare is that he's going to turn into a sensitive, thin-skinned, ranting, raving, crying woman. And Anna's worst nightmare is he's going to turn into an abusive predator, who abuses her power, and steps on people and hurts them. Sometime during the spring, Destiny deleted every Discord DM he's ever sent Anna. May 26, 2022, Destiny directed his audience to Anna's Kiwi Farms thread, effectively doxing her on his stream. Okay, what's the context of this? That sounds pretty serious. He did it. He did this likely in retaliation for something she'd said about him on stream, explained in the DM exchange below. Despite being on relatively good terms and despite having sexted two days prior... So some of this stuff, like that, that is a pretty big claim, right? And to me, I'm like, well, I know that he's made big claims about me that I think are pretty, you know, misrepresentative of what happened. So what actually happened here? Kiwi Farms is a forum where users track and discuss the lives of locales, internet figures who provide entertainment in the form of Schadenfreude. It is common for forum users to dox their targets and take sadistic delight in the psychological harm they inflict. Cheerfully, I mean, that is an extremely, you know, like, look, like there's criticism of Kiwi Farms that you could make. But, um... I mean the way the way it's framed here. One of the big one of the big things about kiwi farms is like not touching the poo, right? The whole point is you're not supposed to interact and instigate things with them directly via kiwi farms. That's called touching the poo, and it's like you shouldn't do that. You're just supposed to document and discuss and talk. So you know, I'm. I mean, I can understand the characterization of it in a certain way, but like the thing is with kiwi farms on the whole, broadly speaking, is that. Nine times out of ten, you can just ignore what they're doing and it won't affect you, basically. Anyway, let's continue. Cheerfully, Destiny said, This is my only non-media blackout time. Somebody on Kiwi Farms has made a thread of Anna. I'm only doing non-media blackout because I know you fuckers are going to be finding it slowly over the next week or two and then talking about it in chat and then getting big bans. So if you're obsessed with Anna and you want to talk about it all the time, you chatter, you can actually go to Kiwi Farms and you can go and post all you want, read all you want, make accounts there. People put a lot of effort into categorizing and archiving everything. There you go, okay? This seems less so that he's like, um, you know, a malicious thing. It seems more so that he's just sick of people talking about it and he's like, fuck off to Kiwi Farms if you want to, you know, do low-cow shit or whatever, right? I mean, that that's how I'm interpreting that, but obviously I'm a white blood cell, so what do I know? All right, boom. Now back to the media blackout mode. Oh, the reason why we do the media blackout is because anytime she gets any attention, that will loop and feed into itself for fucking hours or weeks or months or whatever. Anna's Kiwi Farms thread had been created two weeks earlier and an average 1.4 posts per day. The day Destiny signal boosted the thread, there were 35 posts, followed by another 99 that week. Anna's full name and city were doxed the day Destiny announced the thread, with one user saying... Kimmy just lied on stream saying that a dox is fake and the information is not true. All right, challenge accepted, stalker. The user posted Anna's family photos and screenshots from a family social media to prove that she had been successfully docked. Anna DM Destiny, what the fuck is wrong with you? You just outed that Kiwi Farm thread about me. Dude, you are horrible. Destiny, I have a media blackout related to your stuff and I wanted to get everyone to get it out before people were talking about it incessantly over the next two weeks as more and more people discovered it. You were constantly talking about me on your stream, so I think it's fair for me to bring it up. You went as far as to say I was sexually abusive the last time you mentioned me. Anna, because you threatened to leak my nudes, you fucking sociopath. You literally ruined my fucking life. You just dox me on your stream. Fuck you. You put me in danger. Okay, this is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing where, uh, you know, 
I'm seeing where Mr. Girl is looking at my situation in such a thing. He's framing this in like, obviously, you know, is it an advisable thing to do? No, probably not. But he's framing it in like this insane way that Destiny is doing it because he wants like, you know, he wants this fucking outcome. Do you know what I mean? It's like he it's like he's he's acting like Destiny's doing it to be like, I want a doxed, I want a found, I want a fucking taken out or something, you know? It's like a bit of a reach. Sure, you can criticize Destiny for doing this, right? I think there's plenty to criticize in like doing this in a sort of off-handed way on stream. But the framing is like crazy to me anyway. But you know, I'm just here to defend Destiny at all costs. So what do I know? Let's continue on. Okay. <clears throat> You're doing it to yourself and you're going to keep doing it to yourself. October 24th, 2022. Lav. First Lav mention. First Lav mention. Okay. A 24-year-old streamer Destiny had a sexual relationship with told Destiny on stream that he hadn't done a good job of protecting Anna from harassment. Destiny immediately threatened to cut ties with her if she kept talking. I was part of the stream as well and I... And I agreed with Lav that he was not simply Anna's victim. I still knew very little about the relationship. Shouting, Destiny um, Destiny said that Anna's abuse of him was as straightforward as somebody being locked in a basement, beaten and starved. He went to the bathroom, leaving Lav and me alone to talk in front of the audience. I said if she wanted to push back against his claim that she was defending his abuser, she should take the position that Anna didn't, re didn't really lock him in a basement. The chat was ignited. Why talk about it, retard? Don't say that. Destiny, are you okay? Manipulators latching onto the thing that can hurt Destiny. Victim blaming. Mr. Girl and Lava, the nar a narcissist. Destiny fans started multiple posts about it in my subreddit. The topic of Anna is banned from his, about how I was weaponizing his abuse without understanding the situation. They commented, Why are we opening this can of worms? It feels like other people's trauma is being hijacked so people can win an argument. If this is something that is to be discussed, do it in private for the love of God. I don't care what Stephen thinks about it, to be honest. This was a line for me. I don't know what exactly I can see from Max to erase the feeling of absolute disgust I have right now. Though I had been warned never to mention Anna, I was still surprised by the response and pointed out that Destiny had fucked the streamer and didn't hold boundaries with her despite calling her a stalker and didn't hold his boundary with Lab about not wanting to talk about it. I couldn't understand why the fans of the 33-year-old millionaire shit-talker were rushing to hold his boundaries for him. Two weeks later, I found out he'd been sexting her on and off all along. I felt strongly that I should speak out about it, if only to repent for my own complicity and began working on this project. November 10th, 2022. Destiny found out I was investigating his professional relationships and accusing him of sexual misconduct. He launched a counterattack immediately, calling me a rapist, abuser, manipulator, and narcissist on stream. Anticipating this, I begged Anna for three hours to give me a screenshot proving he was still sexting her. She was extremely resistant, as she felt a screenshot would be too much of a violation of Destiny's privacy and she didn't want to jeopardize her ongoing relationship with him. She suggested I go public without it, saying she would provide one if Destiny denied the claim. Fearing I'd be hung out to dry, I recruited my girlfriend and Lav to help me convince her. Oh, here we go. Um, Destiny started up the attack stream titled I'm Nuclear and began his campaign to smear and discredit me. I still had permissions in, dis in his Discord server, so I jumped onto the stream and said, you've been sexting consistently with Anna for a year. He responded, me and Anna don't have any problems. I said everything that he said about her is a lie. And that she never stalked him. He countered that she did stalk him, but that stopped a year ago. They've been cool since, and he has no obligation to provide the public with details of his personal sex life. <laughs> when I kept arguing, he muted me, so I left. And... <laughs> oh my god okay right let's just let me just get through. we're nearly we're near the end of the anna segment i can feel it okay we're near the end of the anna segment we're getting there when i kept arguing he muted me so i left anna gave me the screenshot and i tweeted it out she would later dm destiny the only reason i ever showed mr girl that screenshot 
was because he said it will help people to see that I'm not a stalker. Keep this private, okay, please, because Max scares the shit out of me. He is insanely manipulative, like holy shit. The amount of coercion he was putting on me to send him a screenshot of our sexting was insane. It's like nothing I've ever experienced before. Stephen, yeah, I know. He's got you and Lav twisted into this idea that I'm running around sexually manipulating and abusing people on my stream. The next day, Anna DM me. I'm not happy that Lav broke our privacy agreement. I'm also sorry that my behavior has been two-faced. I'm scared that you're going to come after me now like Lav has. Jesus Christ, okay. I replied, no, I knew you would go back to him. You're trapped just like I am. I've been struggling to get out of his grip for a year. I'm just like you and I see that now. I've been crying all day. Two days later, on November 13th, Destiny reacted live to Chudlogic panel discussing Lav's abuse claims against Destiny. Anna was in Chudlogic's audience chat asking to be let on so she could speak for herself. Destiny, laughing, said, Dude, Anna is probably mentally completely getting fucking destroyed right now. A moment later, he said, That's not funny, I shouldn't. As he listened to Lav criticize his relationship with Anna, Destiny said, me and her are cool, everything is fine or whatever, but just to be clear, this idea that she's some slave of mine is unreal. Lav is totally inventing this idea. But moments later, an audience member sent, Des sent Destiny a screenshot of Anna's messages in Chud Logic's chat. Oh, Anna's in Chud's chat saying that now. He weaponized that powerful platform against me to the point where I was held hostage to him. I was literally, okay, well, never mind. Maybe she's saying it now, I guess. Over the nearly three years since their conversation, Stephen has mentioned Anna in more than 150 streams. Right. I need a few minutes to sort my fucking life out, okay? And then we're going to get back to it and I'm going to keep reading. Because fuck me, I'm absolutely stitching up this person that I'm supposed to be seeing. So let me just... Cal, I'll forward it to his employment. Ooh! Okay, yeah, this is pretty fucked. Assuming this is true. Though I believe he's privated his account and probably deleted them by now. Sorry for any trouble this causes. Thanks for taking the time to read, Stephen. I mean, this is just, like, malicious and unnecessary, right? Nah, it's not based. Not to message the fucking school. Talking shit online and stuff's fine, but this is fucking cringe, man. Absolutely no way uh, you could argue this is based.